Chapter 2051, Struggle for Hegemony The system announcement drove God's Domains players into an uproar. They all wanted to learn more about this auction arena system, and the various major powers promptly launched investigations into the matter. To these players, a new game function meant a new opportunity. The power behind this new function was even more important. It was no exaggeration to say that this event could overturn the current status quo in God's domain. Naturally, the various major powers would place great importance on this auction arena system. It's activating already? Shi Feng could not help but frown when he saw the system announcement. He knew that the auction arena system's activation wouldn't be far off after White River City had been promoted, but he hadn't expected it this soon. Although the auction arena system wouldn't bring about as much of a change as a system update, its influence was staggering. The system was related to management rights in NPC cities, which would finally give players a substantial level of control in NPC cities and allow them to manipulate the city's economy. With control of an NPC city's economy, rival powers would have a far more difficult time spreading their influence throughout the city. Moreover, one could secure an extraordinary amount of income from the auction house after securing control of it. The higher a city's player population was, the more profits one could earn from the auction house they controlled. Hence, the auction arena's activation would shake God's domain to its very core, signaling a new era. This would also intensify the competition between the various major powers in the game. This competition between the game's powers would reach new heights. Not only would the Dark Forces participate in the struggle, but the various adventurer teams would join as well. A power did not need to be a guild to take control of a city's auction house, and the auction house's manager didn't need to protect anything. Even a solo player could manage the auction house and earn a massive amount of profits. With such a tempting treasure trove before them, who wouldn't jump at the opportunity? Before today, the various major powers had controlled themselves when competing to protect their foundations from harm, but the auction arena would push them to desperation. Some large guilds, which had been afraid of provoking superpowers, would jump into the competition with these giants without hesitation. The true struggle for dominance in God's domain was about to begin. After Shi Feng settled the management rights transfer for the Hundred Flowers Palace's shops, he teleported back to White River City using a return scroll. He did not bother to waste any more time in Silver Pine City, Star Moon Kingdom, White River City, as Shi Feng stepped out of the magic array. He noticed even more players in White River City than before. Despite the teleportation hall's several new floors, the building was still crowded. The number of merchant and lifestyle players, in particular, had significantly increased. However, guild players still made up the majority of White River City's visitors. Sure enough, they've came to investigate, Shi Feng thought to himself as he watched the cloaked players move about the hall. With the help of omniscient eyes, he clearly saw the guild emblems these players hid under their black cloaks. Many of these players were from guilds outside of Star Moon Kingdom. There were even some players from superpowers and dark guilds in the teleportation hall. So far, only 100 NPC cities had been promoted and activated the auction arena system. On average, not even every kingdom and empire had an NPC city with an active auction arena. Fortunately, White River City was one of the 100 NPC cities, which had attracted many major powers, all of them wanting to learn more about the auction arena. Shi Feng walked to one of the advanced restaurants in the teleportation hall. Melancholic smile and 30-plus merchant players already waited for him in one of the restaurant's VIP rooms. Guild leader, I've brought all of the two-star merchant members you requested. Melancholic smile quietly reported as Shi Feng entered the room. Good. From now on, I want them to memorize the materials on this list. I also want you to use this Thunder Axe crystal to teleport them to Thunder Axe City. Have everyone purchase the materials from the NPC merchants there. Buy as much as you can, 
Shi Feng said as he passed a list of materials and the Thunder Axe Crystal to Melancholic Smile. The auction arena's competition tested more than players' combat standards. It also tested players' resources. Players were allowed to use their resources to increase their strength in the competition. Unlocking equipment was a basic example of this. In the auction arena, players had limited choices when it came to their equipment. Equipment past fine gold rank would be temporarily frozen at fine gold rank. To remove the seal and improve one's equipment rank, players had to pay resources. This was why one's victory hinged on the resources they possessed. A power would only be able to secure control over more NPC cities with enough resources and experts. However, the auction arena didn't accept just any resources. It only accepted epic materials, which was why the various major powers had such an advantage in the auction arena. Normally, one only had a chance of acquiring epic materials when raiding 50-man hard mode dungeons or greater, but they were guaranteed to drop in 100 and 200-man team dungeons. Ordinary large guilds could easily raid 50-man team dungeons, but 100-man hard mode team dungeons was more of a challenge. Only their main force would likely succeed. In comparison, the various major powers had multiple teams that could raid 100-man hard mode team dungeons. Superpowers easily surpassed ordinary large guilds when collecting resources. There was no doubt that Zero Wing's combat power in the fields was extraordinary, but when it came to raiding 100-man team dungeons, it was no match for superpowers. However, Zero Wing wasn't exactly doomed. After all, there was more than one way to acquire epic materials. Trading with special NPC merchants was another method, although doing so required a lot of time. Moreover, players had to become two-star merchants to trade with these NPCs. Fortunately, these special NPC merchants were common in a super large-scale neutral city like Thunder Axe City. It was one of the best places to collect epic materials through trade. Initially, Shi Feng had planned to accumulate epic materials from Thunder Axe City's NPCs slowly through his two-star smithy. Collecting epic materials through the smithy would be far easier than sending merchant players to trade with NPC merchants. But now that the auction arena system had activated sooner than he had expected, he had no choice but to use every available method to acquire the necessary resources. Shi Feng also instructed Melancholic Smile to send some of her subordinates to collect epic materials from the various major cities. Although the various major powers would never sell these items, there was a chance that an expert player was lucky enough to come across some. Settling the matters regarding Thunder Axe City and the epic material collection, Shi Feng contacted Aqua Rose, instructing her and the others to focus on raiding 100-man team dungeons. He then returned to his special forging room in the candlelight trading firm and retrieved the Ancient God Secret Key. He hadn't bothered to use the Ancient God Secret Key because he hadn't spent time raising his combat power past his current limit. If he used the key recklessly, He'd only waste a golden opportunity. Not even God's Domain's various superpowers would get many of these chances. However, he had increased his strength as much as possible, and there wasn't a lot of time left before the secret key expired. Shi Feng tapped on the key made of red luminary stone, and a silver magic array manifested under his feet. Mana surged toward the magic array, and space seemed to freeze due to the influx. After a short moment, Shi Feng transformed into a streak of black light and vanished from the room. Chapter 2052, Road After Tier 2 After Shi Feng activated the ancient god's secret key, he found himself moving through a tunnel of time and space. Various images, visions of God's domain's history, zipped past him. Some images showed the rise of a kingdom, others depicted a war between empires and some showed heroes as they triumphed. After quite some time, a massive black hole appeared before Shi Feng. Countless arcs of pitch black electricity snaked in and out of this black hole. Even though Shi Feng was still far from the black hole, he could sense how powerful the arcs of electricity were. He suspected that these black electric arcs would even turn a tier 5 being to ash in an instant. As Shi Feng fell into the black hole and encountered the black electricity, the magic barrier around his body protected him from harm. In the end, 
he entered the black hole in one piece. By the time Shi Feng recovered from his days, he stood inside an ancient, dilapidated palace. System, you have discovered the ancient god's maze. System, while inside the ancient god's maze, Communication with the outside world is prohibited. Time flows within the maze as it does in the real world. You will automatically be transported out of the ancient god's maze in the event of your death. So, this is the trial ground? The system notification didn't particularly surprise Shi Feng. After all, he currently stood in a place the ancient gods had left behind. Severed communication and the altered flow of time were normal. He was far more interested in the maze's environment. Aside from the tightly shut stone doors, there were no paths leading further into. However, this palace's mana density was incredibly high. Even Zero Wing Cities paled in comparison. The environment was a godsend to Shi Feng. Not only could players exhibit greater strength while in a high mana environment, but they would also recover their stamina and concentration much faster. Players could continue to fight without worrying about running out of the resources. Following which, Shi Feng approached the tightly shut doors. Many divine runes had been carved into the doors which were made entirely of black luminaries stone. The closer Shi Feng got to the doors, the more pressure he felt from them. He felt that the door's aura was no weaker than that of a tier 5 NPC. System, you have discovered the ancient god's gate. You may choose one of four difficulties, normal, hard, hell, and azure. No changes will be allowed once you have made your selection. Please choose carefully. There are four difficulties. Shi Feng was stunned when he heard the system notification. He remembered that after using the ancient god's secret key, one should only have three difficulties to choose from, normal, hard, and hell. The secret key's trial had the same difficulty modes as dungeons in the outside world. As a result, Many players who had challenged the ancient god's secret keys trial had taken the difficulty selection too lightly, wasting their golden opportunity. Ordinary experts had no trouble rating normal mode dungeons, in fact, they usually rated hard mode. However, peak experts accepted nothing less than hell mode dungeons. Most peak experts considered weaker modes an insult to their strength. In the end, however, Ordinary experts proved incapable of even clearing the normal mode trial. Peak experts had even been rendered powerless when challenging the hard mode trial. This was why many players who had obtained an ancient god's secret key had wasted their opportunities in the past. One would have a high chance of earning an epic item if they could complete the normal mode trial. Completing the hard mode trial could award players several epic items with a small chance of obtaining a fragmented legendary item. Finally, completing Hell Mode gave players a high chance of acquiring a fragmented legendary item. However, Shi Feng had never heard of an Azura Mode. Why wouldn't it surprise him? This turn of events left Shi Feng unsure of which difficulty he should choose. The Ancient God's Secret Keys trial scaled to the challenger's level. As such, it was far more important for the player to improve their combat and equipment standards, rather than increase their level. Shi Feng had intended to challenge Hell Mode and pray for a fragmented legendary item, and he had been relatively confident in succeeding. The discovery of an Azura Mode, however, put him in a bind. The difficulty of the Secret Keys trial increased substantially with each difficulty mode. Of course, if one succeeded they'd be handsomely rewarded. He was almost certain of completing Hell Mode, but he'd likely have a hard time if he chose Azura Mode. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's go with Azura Mode. After giving the matter some thought, Shi Feng chose Azura Mode. Although he knew he'd have a high chance of earning a fragmented legendary item if he cleared Hell Mode, it wasn't a guaranteed drop. Based on the trial's setting, however, he should be guaranteed a fragmented legendary item if he cleared Azura Mode. Rather than gamble on Hell Mode, he might as well take the risk and challenge Azura Mode. Two epic items would be of little help to him or Zero Wing. Only fragmented legendary items could bring about significant changes. As players reached higher levels and improved their combat standards, epic items would become more common in God's domain. Zero Wing could still rely on its numerous epic items to contend with superpowers peak experts, but as time passed, the low quantity and quality of Zero Wing's peak experts would begin to show. As luck would have it, 
nurturing a peak expert took a lot of time, even with players that had ample resources and heaven-defying talent. The only way Zero Wing could keep up with God's Domain's rapidly developing world was to rely on fragmented legendary items. Moreover, Epic Items' help would be limited after reaching Tier 2. Tier 3 had been a massive turning point in God's domain in the past countless powers had risen to prominence or fallen into the pits of hell when the Tier 3 era had begun. Fragmented legendary items and above would be players' last hope for a significant power boost after reaching Tier 3. These items could even help experts with lacking combat standards reach Tier 3 and Tier 4. This was why guilds with fragmented legendary items had had more Tier 3 and 4 experts than guilds that did not. Every additional fragmented legendary item Zero Wing gained would ensure one more Tier 3 or 4 experts to support it in the future. Since the Azura mode could guarantee a fragmented legendary item, he had no choice but to choose the difficulty. Once Shi Feng made his decision, the ancient god's gate released a golden light. The doors slowly parted to reveal a dark corridor. Sure enough, this trial won't be that simple. Shi Feng's expression tensed slightly as he stared down the dark corridor, his instincts screaming that danger awaited him. He could already see multiple skeletons strewn along the corridor's sides from its entrance. The skeletons all wore excellent equipment every piece radiating with the glow unique to epic equipment. The skeleton's armor was clearly damaged beyond repair. It was easy to imagine how difficult the Azure mode trial was. Those unfamiliar with God's domain would most likely treat these skeletal corpses as mere decorations. But Shi Feng, who had experienced more than a decade in God's domain, knew that wasn't the case. Rather, they were a warning. Epic items were extraordinary and they weren't easy to damage. This held true for both players' items and NPCs. Taking a deep breath, Shi Feng summoned the Fire Spirit and instructed it to lead the way. The instant the Fire Spirit stepped through the gate, a furious roar echoed from the corridor's depths, so loud that Shi Feng had to cover his ears. This roar was particularly familiar to Shi Feng. A Dragon's Roar Chapter 2053 Epic Armor Kit Fragment The majestic dragon's roar reverberated throughout the entire corridor, so powerful that even the sky seemed to shake. Only after the roar faded away could Shi Feng finally move his body again. However, after the roar ended, both Shi Feng and the fire spirit received a debuff called Dragon's Might, which reduced their reaction speed by 20%, movement speed by 30%, and physique by 15%. They also couldn't receive any buffs from skills and spells. So, this is Azura mode. Shi Feng was astonished as he looked at the debuff he and the fire spirit had received. The reduction in physique and speed was only secondary. The crucial point was the inability to receive buffs. This meant that even berserk skills were useless. Having berserk skills sealed was potentially fatal to expert players underscore especially when surviving out in the fields. Berserk skills could be used during crucial moments to save one's life or deal with a problem that could not be dealt with normally. Berserk skills could even be used to achieve reversals. Without the ability to use berserk skills, all these possibilities would be gone. If one came across unexpected danger they would undoubtedly die. Not daring to be careless, Shi Feng immediately used the Bible of Darkness to summon a level 85, tier 3 demon. Although the demon was also suppressed by Dragon's Might and its overall combat power was inferior to the Fire Spirits, having the demon was still better than not having it. During crucial moments, he could use it as a meat shield. Following which, Shi Feng had the tier 3 Tomahawk demon lead the way with the fire spirit following closely behind it. As for himself, he maintained a 50-yard distance from the fire spirit. At this distance, even if the tomahawk demon and fire spirit got caught in a trap, he would be safe. If they stumbled upon a dangerous situation, he could also run away at a moment's notice. However, contrary to his expectations, he did not come across any dangerous situations at all. Even after walking for more than 10 minutes, let alone a monster, there wasn't even a simple trap set up in the corridor. He traversed the corridor and arrived at a dark hall relatively easily. The hall was the size of a football stadium, 
with stone pillars erected on all sides. The divine runes carved onto these stone pillars made the place extraordinarily chilly. Even Shi Feng, with his extremely high ice resistance, could not help but shudder. Fortunately, the cold only had a slight impact on his movements, he did not lose any HP. Meanwhile, as soon as the tomahawk daemon and the fire spirit arrived at the center of the hall, the divine runes on the surrounding stone pillars suddenly shone. Both the demon and the fire spirit disintegrated, the elemental mana used to make up their bodies reverting to its original form. Afterward, the entire hall lit up brightly as blade-wielding soldiers emerged from the ground one after another. These soldiers were giants made from various types of elemental mana. Elemental Guard, Elemental Creature, Great Lord, Level 72, HP 32 million 32 million. Among these elemental giants, one held a staff. Mana belonging to the four major elements gathered passively around this giant. All of the ambient mana responded to every single action this giant made as if this giant was the elemental overlord of this entire hall. Elemental Prayer, Realm Lord, Elemental Creature, Grand Lord, Level 73, HP 65 million 65 million. As these elemental creatures appeared, a translucent pillar made out of magic crystal rose from the center of the hall. Sealed inside this translucent pillar was a dazzling, crystalline bottle that radiated a shudder-inducing aura, a bloodline. A trace of surprise flashed across Shi Feng's eyes when he saw the crystal bottle inside the magic crystal pillar. Although he had been confident that the Azura Mode Trials reward would be something excellent, he never imagined that it would be this excellent. At his standard, Epic items no longer posed a temptation. Only top-tier epic items could move him now. However, a bloodline was far more valuable than any epic item. The value of even the most ordinary bloodline rivaled that of a fragmented legendary item. A bloodline might provide expert players more help than a fragmented legendary item. Despite that, the first item he came across in the Azura mode Ancient God's Maze was already a bloodline. How could he not be surprised by this situation? However, Shi Feng calmed himself very quickly. The bloodline was indeed valuable, but it would mean something only if he actually obtained it. The monsters standing before him were extraordinary. Moreover, since summoned creatures could not be used inside this hall, he would have to rely entirely on himself to deal with these monsters. However, with just a rough glance, he already spotted more than 200 Great Lord ranked Elemental Guards. The Elemental Prayer standing at the center of the hall was even a Realm Lord, an existence whose combat power far surpassed that of monsters of the same rank and level. Against such a force, even a level 70. 100-man expert team would not be a match. In a situation where berserk skills and summoned creatures could not be used, even Shi Feng would have no choice but to turn tail and run when coming across the elemental prayer. It wasn't because his combat power was inadequate. After all, his current weapons and equipment were already beyond extraordinary. He could easily contend against a Grand Lord of the same level. The problem was that the Elemental Prayer had too much HP. Before he could whittle down the Elemental Prayer, the Elemental Prayer would have long since killed him. Let's give it a try. Looking at the bloodline stored within the central pillar, Shi Feng still decided to attempt the trial. Unlike other trials, the Ancient God's Secret Keys trials allowed players to head to other locations to search for treasures, even if they could not pass a particular hurdle. Each location would have varying difficulties. Only if players died would their time in the trial come to an end. However, it would be such a pity to simply abandon the bloodline and search the other locations. After all, not every location would contain treasures rivaling fragmented legendary items. Other locations in this Azura mode trial might contain only epic items. Following which, Shi Feng moved to a corner of the hall and started luring the elemental guards over, one after another. He planned to clear out the elemental guards first before dealing with the elemental prayer. If he tried fighting the elemental prayer and the elemental guards together, he would definitely die a very swift death. Faced with the 4 meter tall elemental guards, an ordinary tier 2 expert would have long since run away. However, the elemental guards posed no trouble for Shi Feng, 
as his strength already rivaled that of great lords of the same level. The elemental guard that discovered Shi Feng charged at him without hesitation, the great sword in its hands transforming into numerous phantoms as the blade slashed down on Shi Feng's head. Dear 3 Skill Shadow Entanglement Each phantom carried 120% of the elemental guard's strength, and all seven phantoms struck down at Shi Feng from different directions. Even a tier 2 expert would be killed instantly if they were not careful. However, these attacks were nothing before Shi Feng. Crisscrossing the abyssal blade and killing Ray, he deflected two of the seven phantom swords toward the other phantom swords neutralizing the attack in the blink of an eye. Shi Feng received no damage at all. Following which, he stabbed the elemental guard's elemental core. Minus 43,574. He dealt a critical hit when striking the core. The elemental guard's HP promptly fell by a visible chunk. Afterward, Shi Feng stabbed the elemental core once more with his other sword. As the battle wore on, the Elemental Guard's HP continuously decreased. Even though the Elemental Guard's battle recovery was strong, killing the Elemental Guard was only a matter of time. If another Tier 2 expert were here, they would definitely be shocked by the current scene playing out. A Tier 2 player was actually overwhelming a level 72 Great Lord without using any skills or spells, a feat that even peak experts of the same level could not achieve. However, while Shi Feng was indeed capable of killing the Elemental Guard, at the end of the day, it was still a bona fide Great Lord. Even after he started using skills, he still took close to 8 minutes to finish off the Elemental Guard. After the Elemental Guard fell, it dropped several items. When Shi Feng took a look at his experience bar, he frowned involuntarily. He had gone through great pains to kill a Great Lord, yet he was awarded only a pitiful amount of EXP at the standard of a lord of the same level. However, when Shi Feng recalled that this was an ancient god's trial, he found the situation understandable. Great lord-ranked monsters were relatively rare in the outside world. Now, however, there was a bunch of great lords before him. If every one of these great lords gave normal amounts of EXP, then his leveling speed would be absurd. Afterward, Shi Feng collected the loot on the ground. Just as he was about to lure another elemental guard, he suddenly took note of one of the items he was holding. An epic armor kit fragment? Chapter 2054, Treasure Trove Although Shi Feng had already checked that nothing was wrong with the system display and confirmed that the item in his hands was indeed an epic armor kit fragment, his heart still shook with disbelief. In God's domain? Most armor kits were categorized into basic, intermediate, and advanced ranks. Above advanced armor kits were the extremely rare epic armor kits. Unlike the usual armor kits, epic armor kits could promote dark gold equipment to the epic rank. Most expert players already considered epic equipment godly. Since an epic armor kit could transform dark gold equipment into epic equipment, one could easily imagine how valuable an epic armor kit was especially when players used it on dark gold equipment that they had high compatibility with. Of course, the level of epic equipment upgraded using the epic armor kit was fixed. If the base equipment was level 50, then it would only have the attributes of level 50 epic equipment. The upgraded equipment's level would not scale with players to a maximum limit. Even so, an epic armor kit was still something countless players fervently sought to obtain. Meanwhile, as long as Shi Feng collected 100 epic armor kit fragments, he could synthesize one epic armor kit. Normally, epic armor kit fragments only dropped in level 60 plus, 100 man hell mode team dungeons or 200 man hard mode team dungeons. Mythic field bosses also had a chance of dropping the fragments but the drop rate was much lower than in team dungeons. Shi Feng never thought that the elemental guards would actually drop the fragments as well. His view of the elemental guards immediately changed. Now, they were no longer detestable monsters but walking epic armor kits instead. Moreover, the elemental guard had dropped elemental cores, in addition to the epic armor kit fragment. An alchemist could use 10 cores to synthesize an elemental crystal. As an energy source, the elemental crystal was superior to the magic crystal. When used instead of magic crystals in the production of magic scrolls, 
the resulting magic scrolls were more powerful. At the same time, an elemental crystal could also be used as the core of a magic array. Magic arrays powered by elemental crystals were at least 30% more effective. As an example, a defensive magic array that originally could block only ordinary tier 3 attacks would be capable of blocking peak tier 3 attacks if powered by elemental crystals. Overall, the elemental crystal was a strategic resource with a very wide range of uses. On the market, one elemental crystal was worth more than 100 magic crystals. Now, after killing just one elemental guard, Shi Feng had already obtained three elemental cores, following which, he proceeded to kill elemental guards with great enthusiasm. Despite having to fight arduously for roughly eight minutes just to kill each elemental guard, when he thought about the great lord's loot, the suffering he had to endure was of no consequence whatsoever. Moreover, thanks to the high mana environment, Shi Feng did not feel tired at all, even after killing over 40 elemental guards in succession. On the contrary, his fighting spirit reached even greater heights than before. This was because killing these 40 plus elemental guards had earned him 31 epic armor kit fragments and 126 elemental cores. The various large guilds would go mad with envy if they learned about this harvest. After all, during his previous life, a 100-man expert team would have to work tirelessly for more than half a day just to obtain two or three epic armor kit fragments. Meanwhile. He had only grinded for six hours, yet he had already reaped many times more than that. This harvest was simply frightening. However, despite the great harvest, Shi Feng did not continue grinding. Time in the ancient gods' maze flowed at the same rate as in the real world. Since he had grinded in the maze for six hours already, six hours had also passed in the real world. In addition, it had been a long time since he had logged out of God's domain. Even if his avatar inside God's domain was still in a spirited state, his body in the real world needed a certain degree of activity to remain healthy. Following which, Shi Feng chose to log out of God's domain and rest. When he climbed out of his virtual gaming cabin, the sun outside the window had already risen to its highest point. However, the scenery at our Abrosa's main headquarters was much better than that of the Greenwater Villa. He could see the entire city from his room, unlike before. Meanwhile, ever since Zero Wing gained its new headquarters, its development speed had skyrocketed with the recruitment of a large number of experts with great potential. It now had over 2,000 internal members. Although the newly recruited internal members were not particularly high-leveled, with Zero Wing's resources in God's Domain and Auroroboros' original training system, these members could soon become a part of the guild's main fighting force and be used to raid team dungeons. In God's Domain, the best place to obtain a large number of resources and high-ranking equipment was undoubtedly Team Dungeons. This was also the reason why Zero Wing was never able to match up against the various first-rate guilds and superpowers. Moreover, Due to the guild's rapid expansion, the guild was also spending credits like there was no tomorrow. The credits the guild had saved up were gone before anyone realized it. Now, the guild couldn't sustain its operations simply by relying on the income from completing tasks commissioned to the guild and equipment sales. Fortunately, the company Gentle Snow's family ran provided some financial support. With the additional funding, the guild was just barely able to get by. Aqua Rose and Melancholic Smile also had plenty of headaches over the lack of funds. Recently, even Liang Jing, who was overseeing some tasks in the headquarters, had started complaining to him about this matter. After Shi Feng had his lunch and nutrient fluid, he headed to the physical training room of the building to stretch his body. When he entered the training room, which was roughly half the size of a football field, he came across several hundred Zero Wing members. These Zero Wing members stopped what they were doing and greeted him as soon as they saw him. Some of them even had a reverential look when they did so. As there were too many people present, Shi Feng could only nod and smile in response. However, when he saw more than a dozen people lining up before the physical training machines, he could not help but feel a little ashamed. During his previous life, 
it had been rare to see five or six people waiting to use the physical training machine Shadow possessed. Now, there were more than a dozen people waiting for their turn. He had to admit that the current Zero Wing was only the shell of a first-rate guild. If it wished to catch up to the various first-rate guilds and superpowers, it needed a lot more funds. Insufficient funding would impede the guild's development significantly. I need to figure out a way to earn some credits through God's domain, Shi Feng thought to himself as he gazed at the guild members working out. After all, he couldn't rely solely on General Snow's company. Previously, five major companies were necessary to keep our Aburos functioning. Although the current Zero Wing wasn't as large as the past our Aburos, Sustaining its operations with just one major company was still impossible. Roughly one hour into Shi Feng's training, Blackie suddenly rushed into the training room, an anxious expression on his face. Did something happen? Shi Feng asked curiously. Something big happened. Representatives of the Blackwater Corporation have came to talk with us. Blackie said in a panic as he looked at Shi Feng. Chapter 2055, Blackwater Visits. Blackwater? Shi Feng couldn't help his confusion. Why are they here? The Blackwater Corporation was a major, international corporation. Aside from super first-rate guilds and super guilds, other existences were nothing in the corporation's eyes. Furthermore, Zero Wing had clashed with Blackwater quite a few times thus far. Our guild has been prospering in the Or Empire recently. Maybe they're here to warn us away? Blackie wondered aloud after calming down. Why don't we just leave them hanging? Even if they're a major corporation, they can't do anything to us on the surface, and moving against us in the shadows won't be easy as long as we're prepared for it. You're overthinking things. Blackwater is still a major corporation at the end of the day. They wouldn't bother with a personal visit to warn us because of our skirmishes in the Or Empire. They wouldn't be able to afford the humiliation of such an act. Shi Feng said, chuckling, forget it, rather than waste time with random guessing, we might as well hear them out. He still knew a little about how these major corporations operated. If Blackwater really wanted to strike out at Zero Wing in the real world, it wouldn't have sent representatives. It would have made its move behind the scenes, following which, Blackie led Shi Feng to the top floor reception room. In the reception room, Liang Jing who was slightly nervous to receive the Blackwater Corporation's representatives, visibly relaxed when she saw Shi Feng enter the room. Before she had met Shi Feng, a major, international corporation would have been unreachable, yet such a power had sent representatives to visit Zero Wing. Why wouldn't she be shocked? In contrast, Aqua Rose maintained her calm composure despite sitting, face to face with Blackwater's representatives. As a previous honorary elder in a first-rate guild and the princess of her own major corporation, she had experience in these situations. Two representatives from the Blackwater Corporation waited in the room. One was a handsome, middle-aged man wearing casual clothing. Although he wasn't tall or muscular, he radiated a strange pressure. The other representative, a tall, robust man in a black suit, stood behind the middle-aged man. Based on his appearance, he seemed to be the latter's bodyguard. Although he didn't radiate any particular pressure, as if he were just a pedestrian, Shi Feng recognized the bodyguard as extraordinary. He could feel the subtle threat of death from this bodyguard. Hello, you must be Zero Wing's elder Yi Feng. Sure enough, as the rumors have said, you really are quite young. Your future is truly limitless, the middle-aged man said smiling after observing Shi Feng closely for a moment. Right, let me introduce myself. I am the Blackwater Corporation's Jing Yang, currently serving as an elder in the Blackwater Guild. Elder Jing Yang, to what does Zero Wing owe this visit? May I know what you wish to discuss? Shi Feng asked as he eyed Jing Yang, getting straight to the point. He was somewhat familiar with the name, but his knowledge of this man was limited to God's domain. Jing Yang's name was familiar due to his status as a tier 5 Grand Wizard in the past although the man hadn't amassed any eye-catching battle records, a tier 5 player was still formidable. He had stood at the peak of God's domain. Shi Feng had certainly never expected the Blackwater Corporation to send such a big shot to visit Zero Wing. What a straightforward question, Jing Yang said laughing. He then nodded and continued, since that is the case, 
I'll be direct, I'm here in place of the Blackwater Guild's Xoan Wu Chisa, Vice Guild Leader Xoan Wu has a very favorable view of Zero Wing, and she knows that Zero Wing is facing some financial difficulty. If Zero Wing is willing to sell us 10 Guardian Puppets, not only will we pay an ample amount of credits, but we'll also provide 50 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid. I'm sure you'll have no issues nurturing more experts quickly with these resources. 50 S-rank nutrient fluids? Blackie's eyes nearly fell from their sockets when he heard Jing Ying's offer. He and Shi Feng had seen plenty of credits before, but S-rank nutrient fluid was a different story. Blackie was no longer ignorant regarding training in God's domain. After his special training in the Extraordinary Tower and the S-rank nutrient fluid Shi Feng occasionally granted him, he understood how valuable the fluid was. Not only did the S-rank nutrient fluid improve his real body's physique and brain function, but it also helped improve his combat standards in a short time. Unfortunately, S-rank nutrient fluid wasn't something one could buy with money alone. Their swift improvements thus far had been thanks to the S-rank nutrient fluids the White Tiger Dojo had sent as payment. If Zero Wing could secure 50 more bottles, combined with the guild's current real-world training facilities and the extraordinary tower, the guild wouldn't need long to nurture another batch of refinement realm experts. So, this is what they want Shi Feng finally understood what Blackwater's aim for this visit. He had to admit that the battle at Moon Creek Town had made the Guardian puppets famous. Now, even Blackwater wanted to get its hands on the puppets, but it wasn't a weapon players could steal. As a result, Blackwater was forced to attempt to purchase it from Zero Wing. Seeing Shi Feng's silent reaction and Blackie's surprise, Jing Ying chuckled and said, now that the auction arena system has activated, the struggle for the various NPC cities has begun. As the only promoted NPC city in Star Moon Kingdom and the neighboring kingdoms, White River City will become a target for the various major powers. You can easily imagine how intense the competition for its auction house will be. Moreover, we have heard that Starlink now bears immense hatred for Zero Wing due to the battle at Moon Creek Town and has already begun preparations to claim White River City's auction house. If you are willing to sell us 10 Guardian Puppets, Vice Guild Leader Xoan Wu will help you secure White River City's auction house. What do you think? Jing Yang's voice had been very gentle, and Temptation laced his words as if he had a thorough grasp of Zero Wing's weakness. He had even convinced Aqua Rose of this transaction's worth. Setting aside the 50 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluids, the offer to help Zero Wing secure White River City's auction house made the transaction worthwhile. The struggles for an NPC City's auction house weren't like combat in the field and siege battles. It was a competition that heavily relied on the number of experts and resources one possessed. Compared to Starlink, Zero Wing severely lacked both aspects. However, if Zero Wing had Xoan Wu Chai's assistance, one of Blackwater's vice guild leaders, securing White River City's auction house was almost guaranteed. Moreover, Zero Wing desperately needed operating funds. If the guild received a large income of credits, its development could skyrocket. When Jing Ying saw the yearning looks on both Aqua Rose and Blackie's faces, he was not surprised in the least. Blackwater's conditions were quite generous offering exactly what Zero Wing currently needed. All they had to do was sign the contract and seal the deal. However, after giving the matter some thought, Shi Feng looked at Jing Ying and earnestly replied, I'm sorry, but we refuse. Chapter 2056, You'll Regret It. At Shi Feng's words, the reception room fell deathly silent. Both Jing Ying and Aqua Rose were stunned and confused as they stared at Shi Feng. Why? Jing Yang could not help but ask after taking a deep breath. Blackwater's conditions were incredibly generous. If Zero Wing accepted the offer, it could grow more powerful than it had ever been. No guild would consider rejecting such an offer, and this was the perfect opportunity to reconcile with Blackwater. It was always better to have another ally than an extra enemy in God's domain. The Guardian Puppet was a very powerful war weapon. First rate whether protecting a town or attacking it. Other war weapons couldn't hold a candle to it, but it was only powerful right now. As players reached higher levels and tier 3, 
the Guardian puppet would become obsolete. At most, one could rely on it as a slightly tougher Tier 3 combatant. In his opinion, Shi Feng should be more than willing to agree with Blackwater's conditions. It should already be an honor for Zero Wing that Blackwater had paid a personal visit. Other first-rate guilds couldn't even qualify for the corporation's attention. Yet Zero Wing was unappreciative of Blackwater's goodwill. It's nothing major. The price your guild has offered is just too low, so we don't wish to sell, Shi Feng replied in an extremely calm tone. Low? Jing Ying was stunned. Softly, he asked, how much do you want, then? In addition to the credits, I want 100 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid and 10 high potential shops in major NPC cities. Shi Feng said after giving the matter some thought. Both Aqua Rose and Blackie turned to their guild leader in shock, gaping. 100 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid. Not even the White Tiger Dojo could afford such a price. Even a major corporation like Blackwater would feel a sting if it gave away 100 bottles. Furthermore, Shi Feng wanted high potential shops as well. Not even 10,000 gold was enough to purchase such things. 10 shops would equate more than 100,000 gold. Are you insane? Jing Yang demanded. Do you know how much money 100 bottles of S rank nutrient fluid and 10 high potential shops are worth? He wondered if Shi Feng was trying to challenge his bottom line. He could accept paying 100 bottles of S rank nutrient fluid. But asking for 10 shops was a joke. The Guardian puppet's value would decrease as players reached higher levels, but major NPC cities' shops would not. Their value would only increase as time passed. More players joined God's domain each day and owning high potential shops guaranteed a stable income. Even leasing these shops to others would generate substantial profits. To put it simply, the Guardian Puppet's value couldn't compare to that of high potential shops. Not even four Guardian Puppets were worth a shop in a major NPC city, let alone a one-on-one -on -one trade. Elder Jing Yang, if you find these conditions unacceptable, you may return to negotiate with your superiors, Shi Feng said, smiling at the enraged man before him. His asking price was far above average, but at this stage of the game, Ten Guardian Puppets were worth it. With ten units, the Guardian Puppets could exhibit sufficient combat power, and whoever controlled them could effortlessly capture a guild town. They would also be a massive help when establishing a guild town in a neutral map. If he didn't need the S-rank nutrient fluids and credits so desperately, he wouldn't have even considered selling the Guardian Puppets to Blackwater. Constructing ten puppets wouldn't be easy and the materials were quite rare. Young man, you shouldn't be too greedy. Zero Wing will only benefit in the future if it secures Blackwater's friendship. Forget about the high potential shops, Jing Ying said after calming himself down. He then looked at Shi Feng and stated his final price, 70 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid, as well as the conditions I mentioned previously. Take care as you leave. I won't be able to see you off. Shi Feng said, You, very good, you'll regret this decision. Jing Yang nearly spat blood when he heard Shi Feng's response. He left the room in a huff, not wanting to linger in Zero Wing's headquarters a moment longer. After Jing Yang left, both Aqua Rose and Liang Jing, who had witnessed the entire conversation from a corner of the room, turned to stare at Shi Feng in befuddlement. They also could not help but admire Shi Feng. That was 70 bottles of S-rank nutrient fluid they were talking about. Yet, despite the temptation of Blackwater's offer or its threats, Shi Feng had remained unfazed. After Jing Ying left Zero Wing's headquarters, he contacted Xuan Wu Chiza and updated her on the negotiations outcome. What an interesting person. Xuan Wu Chiza could not help her smile. Even though Zero Wing's existence is on the line. He insists on keeping a tight grip on the Guardian puppets. In my opinion, Zero Wing is not worthy of your attention, Vice Guild leader. They have no idea that Starlink isn't the only guild targeting them and that many other superpowers have set their sights on White River City. They don't realize the lifeline we're offering. They will regret their decision today, Jing Ying said, sneering. In truth. He had visited Zero Wing's headquarters for two reasons. The first reason was for business. The second was to determine whether Zero Wing qualified to become one of Blackwater's puppets. However, 
it would seem that the guild's members were simply ignorant fools. All right, enough. Return for now. We still have much to do, Xoan Wuchiza said before disconnecting the call. She did not bother to comment further on the matter. Once the negotiations with Blackwater came to an end, Shi Feng received Zero Wing's latest status report from Aquarose and Blackie. The guild continued to develop rapidly, especially regarding member recruitment. Zero Wing's elite member count now exceeded 400,000, and more than 4,000 expert members operated in Star Moon Kingdom. The guild's growth was frightening. Shi Feng had to admit that the battles in the Witch's Hill and near Moon Creek Town had elevated Zero Wing's fame and reputation. Now, Many previously hesitant elite and expert players had finally decided to join Zero Wing. In addition, Fire Dance and Zero Wing's other main force members had finished training in the Extraordinary Tower, splitting up into multiple 100-man teams to raid level 60 team dungeons. Their raid progression had also been impressive. They'd likely obtain the first clear of Star Moon Kingdom's various 100-man team dungeons in a few more days. The lack of funds was the only problem now, giving Aqua Rose and Blackie plenty of headaches. In response, Shi Feng agreed to rent Zero Wing City's shops for credits, reducing the guild's coin income. After Shi Feng had assigned tasks, he returned to his room and logged back into God's Domain. Chapter 2057, Improving Swords Transmigration Level 72 Elemental Guards wandered around the quiet hall supported by numerous stone pillars. They left no space for players to approach the hall's center. As one approached the central crystal pillar, the elemental guards closed ranks. The moment Shi Feng logged back into the game, he returned to clearing out these elemental guards. Blackwater's sudden business proposition and Zero Wing's rapid development had helped Shi Feng realize that his guild's development had reached a bottleneck. Growing further would be painfully difficult with the guild's financial predicament. Nowadays, Zero Wing's fame and territory were growing. The guild's member count also continued to rise. Although he had been working to secure Zero Wing's foundations and had restricted the recruitment conditions further, the guild had still reached its financial limit. Even an outsider like Blackwater could see this. It was easy to imagine that other guilds had also noticed Zero Wing's struggles. Normally, a guild would attempt to negotiate with companies and corporations for investment once it reached a developmental bottleneck. Shadow had been the same in the past due to the guild's rapid development. The guild had desperately needed capital. Only after receiving several large companies' investments did the guild continue its development, eventually becoming a second-rate guild. This was the most common option for upstart guilds, although it also scattered the guild's shares, decreasing its cohesion. Of course, there was another method to break past this bottleneck. A guild could maintain its state or reduce its member count, ultimately slowing its development speed. Normally. Shi Feng might have chosen that option. At worst, it would allow other guilds to surpass Zero Wing. However, now that the auction arena system had activated, the competition between the various major powers had reached a peak. If Zero Wing's competition surpassed it now, it wouldn't be surprising if the guild were removed from God's domain entirely. Hence, deliberately stifling Zero Wing's development would only ensure a slow and imminent death. Since he didn't wish to share the guild's authority or abandon its phenomenal development speed, there was only one option available. He had to earn a large sum of credits through God's Domain. Shi Feng hadn't had the means to do so in the past. God's Domain's resources weren't easy to obtain, and converting them into credits would be akin to putting the cart before the horse. However, Things were different in this life. Once he had entered the ancient god's secret maze, Shi Feng had realized that acquiring a large number of credits through the game wasn't necessarily impossible. The Elemental Cores Not only could one synthesize Elemental Cores into Elemental Crystals, but they could also trade the cores for stamina gemstones from the Sea of Illusions for Star Wandering Merchants. Stamina was imperative to every player. Players' stamina largely restricted their activity in the fields. Hence, items that could increase one's stamina or stamina regeneration were immensely valuable in God's domain. Players could bind stamina gemstones to their equipment to improve their recovery rate. Each gemstone increased stamina recovery rate by 7%. 
and the more of these gemstones one equipped, the faster they'd regain their stamina. Stamina gemstones were one of the few items in God's domain that would never lose their value. No matter what level players reached, they still needed stamina to move, and recovery took a long time. However, players couldn't obtain stamina gemstones from killing monsters. Only four-star wandering merchants sold the items. Moreover, each wandering merchant demanded a different price for the gemstones. The wandering merchants in the Sea of Illusion, a secret land in God's domain, required elemental cores for their stamina gemstones. Several players had discovered the secret land early and made a fortune from it in the past. They had ventured across God's domain, purchasing elemental cores and traded them for stamina gemstones in the Sea of Illusion. When the public eventually learned of this secret, the elemental core's prices had skyrocketed. Now that Shi Feng could collect a large number of elemental cores from these elemental guards, he could use this opportunity to make a fortune by selling stamina gemstones. After all, no one had visited the Sea of Illusion, a level 100 map, yet. Realizing this, Shi Feng's enthusiasm to grind the elemental guards reached new heights. He also began to use divine providence to increase his harvest. Although killing these elemental guards was monotonous, Shi Feng considered it a good opportunity to refine his bronze combat technique, swords transmigration. High mana environments were extremely rare in God's domain, let alone one with denser mana than Zero Wing City. He wouldn't have to worry about his stamina or concentration consumption rates while using the bronze combat technique here. As Shi Feng repeated executed swords transmigration, he became more familiar with the technique. As a result, he could divert and use more of his enemy's attacks. Initially, he had only been able to take advantage of three enemy attacks at once, but after some practice, he could use four, then five attacks to his advantage. Moreover, the technique's power increased substantially. The closer he got to the central pillar, the closer the elemental guards clustered. If he weren't careful, he would lure two guards at a time, significantly increasing the time he needed to kill each. At first, he had spent nearly 30 minutes trying to kill the elemental guards that approached him in pairs, with more than 20 of those minutes focused on the first elemental guard. However, as he mastered Swords Transmigration, he eventually lowered that time to 20 minutes per pair. Finally, after nearly two days of fighting, Shi Feng had eliminated all of the elemental guards in the hall. During that time, Shi Feng had slain over 200 elemental guards, obtaining 727 elemental cores and 213 epic armor kit fragments. He now had enough to synthesize two complete epic armor kits. Even Shi Feng was stupefied by his harvest he had to admit that the Azura mode trial was wondrous. He hadn't even ventured past the maze's first hall, and he had yet to face the guardian boss, yet he had acquired enough of a bounty to make superpowers envious. After organizing his loot, Shi Feng shifted his gaze toward the five-meter-tall, four-armed elemental prayer a short distance away. The guardian boss wore white robes and held a staff and a golden longsword. Shi Feng hadn't been particularly confident of defeating the elemental prayer earlier, but after improving his skill with swords transmigration, he was more than eager to fight the guardian boss. As long as he won, he would obtain a bloodline. Stealthily. Shi Feng approached the elemental prayer from behind. Unsheathing his swords and activating Wind Blade, he transformed into a blur as he thrust his blades toward the Realm Lord's back. Chapter 2058, Fighting the Realm Lord Although Shi Feng's movement speed was very high, the elemental prayer was a Realm Lord. Not only would it have increased combat power within its territory, but it could also suppress enemies. These two effects made the Realm Lord far more powerful than ordinary monsters of the same rank and level. The instant Shi Feng moved within 50 yards of the elemental prayer, he felt his body grow heavier. His speed significantly decreased, as well. The gravity around it is so powerful, Shi Feng could not help but frown. Realm Lords had different methods of controlling their territory. Some manipulated physical objects to attack players, 
while others suppressed players' basic attributes. The most troublesome realm lords were those that could control their environment. Realm lords with environmental control could transform the area around them into a sea of fire or an icy hell. There were also some realm lords like the elemental prayer that could increase the gravitational force around them. For players, Increased gravitational force was far more frightening than movement speed reduction. More gravitational pull would slow every movement they made. The elemental prayer discovered Shi Feng the moment he entered its domain, and it began to chant a spell and wave its staff. Suddenly, over twenty wind blades flew at Shi Feng. At the same time, rocky spikes began to emerge from the ground under his feet. The guardian boss had needed no time at all to complete its double cast. Shi Feng had no choice but to jump up to dodge the rock spikes. Unfortunately, while he was airborne, he wasn't able to dodge the wind blades that had arrived a moment later. Without being able to dodge the wind blades, Shi Feng's only option was to receive the magical attack with his sword. Swords orbit. Boom, boom, boom. The instant Shi Feng's swords collided with the wind blades, he felt as if he had batted away a cannonball. His arm felt slightly numb from the impact of a single collision. Moreover, the numbness lingered for longer periods with each subsequent deflection. With the increased gravitational force slowing his reactions, Shi Feng began to struggle to keep up with the wind blades' attacks after a few clashes. Seeing so many wind blades left, Shi Feng activated defensive blade to block the remainder of the elemental prayer's first round of attacks so strong. When Shi Feng landed and noticed the elemental prayer double casting again, he could only stare at the realm lord for a moment in astonishment. Against so many powerful attacks and the increased gravitational force, even a level 70 expert would likely die in an instant. However, before Shi Feng's arms could regain feeling, the elemental prayer finished chanting its spells, like its first round. The guardian boss attacked with rock spikes and wind blades. Break. This time, Shi Feng didn't try to dodge the rising rock spikes, using Purgatory Pentaslash to shatter them. Instead, he then spun around and dashed toward a nearby stone pillar. With his current basic attributes and the battlefield's gravitational force, dodging all 20 plus wind blades would be impossible. His death would be guaranteed if he tried to take those attacks head on. Hence, he had to rely on the stone pillars around him to block the wind blades. Using the stone pillars to reduce his blind spots, Shi Feng found it easier to dodge and block the incoming wind blades. In the end, he survived the elemental prayer's second defensive unscathed. Sure enough, these stone pillars are here for a reason. Shi Feng breathed a sigh of relief when, after taking a few hits from the wind blades, he saw that the stone pillar remained intact. If the wind blades, which had peak tier 3 power, had shattered the stone pillars, this battle was as good as over for him. Although he could rely on the stone pillars to block the realm lord's attacks, approaching the elemental prayer was still extraordinarily difficult. After multiple attempts, Shi Feng discovered that the realm lord used a greater variety of spells the closer he got to it. Sometimes, the elemental prayer fired a beam of roaring flames. Other times, it called down a column of water from above. Of course, the guardian boss still used the occasional rock spikes and wind blades. The boss's coordination with the four types of attacks made approaching the elemental prayer practically impossible. As expected of a realm lord, this boss could likely even annihilate a 100-man team of the same level. Trying to fight it alone is asking too much. Shi Feng could not help his bitter smile as he watched the elemental prayer cast one spell after another. Magical class monsters were most afraid enemies getting close. After all, they were vulnerable in close-range combat, but Shi Feng couldn't even get within 40 yards of the realm lord much less melee range. He felt as if he were surrounded by a party of tier 3 magical class players as tier 3 spells continued to bombard him. He could only rely on the surrounding stone pillars to evade the spells. If any other peak expert were in his shoes, 
they'd have likely died a long time ago. Shi Feng had to admit that the Azura Mode Guardian boss was astounding. Trying to acquire an item that rivaled a fragmented legendary item wasn't going to be easy. Shi Feng retrieved the Ring of Gospel from his bag and spent 7,000 magic crystals to activate Miniature World and Ring of Brilliance. Miniature World instantly reduced the gravitational force that affected Shi Feng. At the same time, the Elemental Prayer's basic attributes decreased fell by a significant chunk. Although Miniature World suppression didn't hinder the Realm Lore drastically, it still reduced its basic attributes by 20%, which considerably reduced the power of its spells. Meanwhile, Ring of Brilliance improved Shi Feng's physique and basic attributes by 20%. Now, Shi Feng could intercept the Elemental Prayer's Wind Blades with his swords without relying on the stone pillars. Moreover, Shi Feng could exhibit his full strength now that the Elemental Prayer's gravity domain had been weakened. He could dodge the boss's attacks with ease and soon reach the Realm Lord, killing Rator through the air, sending a streak of blue light slicing at the Elemental Prayer. Although the Guardian boss wielded a golden longsword, its melee prowess paled in comparison to its magical power. Shi Feng easily maneuvered his attack past the Elemental Prayer's defenses and landed a direct, critical hit dealing over minus 40,000 damage. Despicable intruder, suffer God's fury. The elemental prayer bellowed after taking the hit the golden longsword in its hand disintegrated, and eight smaller versions appeared around the realm lord, each wrapped in golden flames. Under the elemental prayer's control, golden longswords flew toward Shi Feng. Shi Feng hurriedly moved and executed swords transmigration to block the attacks. The power within these golden longswords was immense. They clearly harbored more strength than Shi Feng currently possessed. Instead of receiving the attacks head-on, Shi Feng expertly used his movement techniques to evade some of the flaming weapons, while deflecting the rest. By doing so, he managed to fend off the guardian boss's attacks without taking damage. After knocking away the golden swords, Shi Feng used the opportunity to bombard the elemental prayer with one skill after another. Thundering flash, thunder flame explosion, flame burst, shadow blade, damages in exceeding minus 100,000 began to appear above the elemental prayer's head with some in the hundreds of thousands. The Guardian boss's HP began to fall at a visible rate. Once that round of attacks had ended, the Elemental Prayer continued to manipulate the Golden Swords, pressing its attack. However, Shi Feng managed to block every incoming strike. Although the Elemental Prayer occasionally cast spells, Shi Feng could heal himself with the Seven Luminaries Rings Life Domain. Overall, although Shi Feng had the advantage, the Elemental Prayer had too much HP. Although its maximum HP had been reduced to 52 million, its battle recovery restored 520,000 horsepower every 5 seconds. This slowed Shi Feng's progress in the fight. Even after more than 5 minutes, the Elemental Prayer still had 95% of its HP remaining. Unfortunately, Miniature World only had a 10 minute duration, and without it, Shi Feng wouldn't be a match for the Realm Lord. Furthermore, Shi Feng had to spend 5,000 magic crystals each time he activated the skill, and he had only brought a little over 20,000 with him. Should I give up? Shi Feng had fought for nearly 10 minutes, yet the Elemental Prayer still had 92% of its HP. If he couldn't increase his DPS, the Guardian Boss would eventually wear him down and kill him. However, when Shi Feng saw the eight golden longswords flying toward him once more, his eyes lit up with inspiration as he considered a way to increase his damage. He simply needed to use the elemental prayer's strength against it. This time, Shi Feng didn't dodge the eight golden longswords. Instead, he met all of them in battle. Swords Transmigration Chapter 2059 Bronze combat techniques true ability. The elemental prayer's attacks were quite cunning. Since the start of the battle, it had used the eight golden longswords to attack Shi Feng from all directions. Moreover, the flaming weapons were far more nimble than the wind blades and could even alter their attack trajectories during their attacks. Even a shield warrior or guardian knight skilled with the shield would take a direct hit if they weren't careful. As soon as Shi Feng began to execute swords transmigration, he deflected five longswords, 
sending them in different directions. Two of them slammed into two long zerds Shi Feng hadn't deflected, nullifying the attacks. Due to Shi Feng's limited strength, he couldn't fully utilize the remaining three deflected long zerds. He wasn't able to send them toward the elemental prayer. Moreover, he wasn't able to deflect or nullify the last long sword and it cut through Shi Feng's right shoulder. Minus 83,167. Sure enough, I'm really pushing my limits. Shi Feng breathed a sigh of relief when he saw his HP. Just one of these golden long zerds could deal enough damage to kill a level 60 magical class player, even a level 60 mount would likely be in danger. Fortunately, Shi Feng's defense far surpassed that of a level 60 mount. Amassing 80,000 horsepower alone was difficult for current players, but Shi Feng had already reached level 70, had a bloodline, and possessed multiple fragmented legendary items, including the Ring of Brilliance's effects. He had as much as 260,000 horsepower. He was even sturdier than a level 70. Tier 2 mount. This was what made monsters fearsome. Despite the fact that their combat standards were no match for players, their extraordinarily high HPs rendered players helpless. Unless players' combat power far surpassed the monsters they fought, they'd have no choice but to flee. HP was one of the weaknesses solo players faced. Even if a solo player were stronger than a boss, they'd never defeat the monster unless they had the help of certain tools. However, after blocking the latest attacks, Shi Feng finally saw a ray of hope. There was no doubt that his strength was no match for the Golden Long Zerds, so his ability to deflect and direct the weapons was limited. However, sending the flaming weapons toward the Elemental Prayer wasn't impossible. Only, his grasp of positioning and timing had to be perfect. This was also the first time he had to deflect five attacks with so much strength so he severely lacked the proper experience. After taking a brief moment to consider his next move, Shi Feng began to attack the Realm Lord again. Like before, the eight golden long zerds flew toward him from multiple directions. This time, however, Shi Feng immediately activated Void Shield, the translucent barrier enveloping his body. Swords transmigration. Boom, boom. Two golden long zerds struck the Void Shield and the five blades Shi Feng deflected landed near the elemental prayer's feet, missing the boss by a few inches. Did I attack too soon? Seeing the flaming long zerds land at the elemental prayer's feet, Shi Feng knew he had been too hasty, resulting in an undesirable outcome. He needed to make some minor adjustments. Despite seeing the elemental prayer launch another round of attacks, Shi Feng deliberately maintained his speed. Boom! Three golden long zerds flew into the void shield simultaneously. Fortunately, Shi Feng had sent one of the five long zerds he had deflected into the elemental prayer's foot. A damage of over minus 300,000 appeared above the realm lord's head, far exceeding what Shi Feng's normal skills were capable of. This excited Shi Feng. The outcome was almost as he had imagined. The system calculated the damage monsters dealt to each other differently than the damage they dealt to players. Although the flaming weapon had lost a fraction of its power after Shi Feng had deflected it, it still dealt far more damage than what he could manage. Now, Shi Feng, more or less, understood why the various superpowers in the past had kept such a tight lid on their bronze combat techniques. Mastering a bronze combat technique like Swords Transmigration was far more powerful than obtaining a curse or taboo skill. Even without external tools, players would have the potential to solo high-ranked bosses with such a technique. The successful experience gave Shi Feng a far better grasp of his timing. Following which, Shi Feng returned another dozen attacks to the elemental prayer. Moreover, his deflections became more accurate with each successful attempt. Initially. He had only been able to hit the guardian boss with one of the golden long zerds, but eventually, he returned to flaming weapons, doubling his DPS and devouring the realm lord's HP. 95%, 85%, 80%. Although he wasn't able to return the other three golden long zerds he deflected, as he became more familiar with the process, he was able to nullify the remaining attacks. He no longer allowed any of the golden long zerds to hit him. Time quickly passed. When the elemental prayer's HP fell to 30%, 
the realm lord went berserk and called down lightning to strike around it. This forced Shi Feng to activate absolute domain to survive. Foolish mortal, burned to ash. The elemental prayer's eyes lit with a scorching glow as it glared down at Shi Feng. Suddenly, the surrounding mana began to surge toward the guardian boss and the mana storm that ensued prevented Shi Feng from approaching. The elemental prayer then raised its staff, manifesting a threefold magic array above its head that covered a 100-yard radius. Raging thunder. Suddenly, arcs of golden electricity shot up from the ground. A large-scale destruction spell? Surprised, Shi Feng activated the seven luminaries rings fantasy domain which made him immune to all magic damage. Magical class bosses generally possessed a few large-scale destruction spells, but they didn't normally cast the spells when players were within melee range since such spells didn't differentiate between friend and foe. It was very easy to get caught within one zone spell if cast at close range. This was also why Shi Feng hadn't bothered to use any of his own large-scale destruction spells. Yet, the elemental prayer before him cast its spell without hesitation. The guardian boss intended to perish along with its enemy. After Shi Feng activated Fantasy Domain, a sea of electricity enveloped everything within a 100-yard radius, with the elemental prayer in its center. Even the guardian boss suffered damage, his HP continuing to decrease. The golden arcs only began to dissipate after 6 seconds having destroyed a significant portion of the hall. After its large-scale destruction spell, the Realm Lord had only lost 5% of its HP. What a powerful spell. Was that a Tier 3 curse? Shi Feng stared at the rising smoke on the Elemental Prayer's body in astonishment. If not for his magic immunity skill, that attack would have killed Shi Feng. He barely had any lightning resistance, and his magic resistance alone wouldn't have been enough. Clearly. The elemental prayer didn't have that problem. As an elemental creature, its magic resistance was immensely high. Even after taking damage from its own tier 3 curse, it had only lost 5% of its HP, roughly 3 million in total. If it were any other boss, it would have lost at least 6 million horsepower. However, it was clear that the elemental prayer was slightly weaker after casting the tier 3 curse. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Shi Feng fervently hacked and slashed at the Realm Lord. Fortunately, the eight golden longzirds no longer had more strength than Shi Feng, and as a result, he easily deflected the flaming weapons back at the Guardian boss, taking more HP from it than before. When the Elemental Prayer's HP fell to 1%, Shi Feng activated Divine Providence and finished it off with instant strike. With a short cry, the Elemental Prayer collapsed transforming into countless particles of light. Chapter 2060, Elemental Prayer's Loot The mana density within the hall rose sharply after the Elemental Prayer's death. It went berserk as it gathered around the Realm Lord's dissipating corpse, gathering the particles of light into a dazzling ball. Slowly, the ball of light rose into the air, growing larger as it absorbed more mana. The light illuminated the hall as if a miniature sun had risen. After several seconds, the gigantic light ball burst, and two dazzling streams of light flowed toward the ground. Two items? Shi Feng watched the two beams shine before him in utter astonishment. According to his understanding, Every guardian boss players killed in the Ancient God's Secret Keys trial only yielded one item, but that item would undoubtedly be top-tier quality. However, the Elemental Prayer had dropped two items, the equivalent of killing two guardian bosses. Shi Feng had definitely hit the jackpot. When Shi Feng stepped forward and touched the two beams of light, the light faded and revealed two translucent globes, each containing one item. When these two items revealed themselves, the sound of a system notification reached Shi Feng's ears. System, congratulations. You have slain the elemental prayer within 30 minutes. You may choose one of the two items before you as your reward. Shi Feng was speechless. He had hoped that divine providence had doubled his loot, but in the end, he'd still walk away with a single item. This choice was simply a result of killing the elemental prayer within half an hour. However, after giving the matter some more thought, 
Shi Feng found the situation reasonable. All of the items these guardian bosses dropped were the best of the best. Being able to double one's loot with higher luck would be absurd. Let's have a look at these two, then. After containing his excitement, Shi Feng tapped on the two items and inspected their attribute panels. After a brief look, Shi Feng's heart began to pound with elation once more. Although he knew that these items would be top tier. He couldn't help his gasp after inspecting them. Both items were amazing, not even a mythic field boss's loot could compare to either item's value. One of the two items was an emerald bead named Elemental Protector. It was a bona fide epic item that could summon four elemental beasts of the same tier as the user and five levels higher at no cost. Each of these four elemental beasts could use skills and spells that correlated with their element, earth, water, wind and fire. However, this item could only summon up to tier 4 elemental beasts, and it had a 12 hour duration and a 2 natura day cool down. As long as a player reached tier 4, they could use the elemental protector to summon 4 tier 4 beasts to fight alongside them. It was an astounding ability. Tier 4 magic scrolls were even rarer than epic items in God's domain, and Shi Feng had only heard of tier 4 summoning scrolls never actually seen one. Regardless of the era, a tier 4 summoned creature would be an immensely powerful ally, even after 10 years in God's domain. Tier 4 and above combatants were extremely rare, first-rate guilds would be incredibly lucky if they had a single tier 5 player. Any first-rate guild with a tier 6 god-ranked expert would be considered a top-ranked guild, no matter how weak the rest of its members were. Without a doubt, the Elemental Protector was one of the best epic items available in the game. It would easily fetch an astronomical price regardless of when it sold. The other time the Elemental Prayer had dropped was called the Twilight Blade. It was the same weapon the Realm Lord had used against Shi Feng, and although it wasn't a famed sword, it was a replica of the legendary weapon, Afterglow. Every legendary weapon had once been famous throughout God's domain. Some had even been treated as kingdom's heirlooms. Even a legendary weapon replica was far beyond any epic weapon. Most replicas were the crafter's failed copies when trying to produce the real deal. Some replicas had even been crafted with the same materials as the true legendary weapon, and some included even better materials. Meanwhile, the Twilight Blade before him was somewhat special. It was actually a prototype of Afterglow. However, the crafter hadn't used high enough quality materials in its creation, so it hadn't become a legendary weapon. This replica hadn't been a result of a flawed production process. Twilight Blade, Replica, One-Handed Sword, Epic Rank, Level 60, Level 120 Equipment Requirement strength 2000 attributes adjust according to user's level attack power plus 2360 level 60 strength plus 205 agility plus 130 endurance plus 157 attack speed plus 18 ignore 40 percent of the target's defense when equipped strength increased by 25 percent agility increased by 10 percent all sword skills plus one levels Ignore levels plus 15. All skill completion rate increased by 2%. Attacks have a 40% chance to trigger the floating light effect, splitting the weapon into three copies. The two duplicates cannot be blocked and deal 100% damage. Additional passive skill Twilight Glow, Twilight Power will corrode any targets the Twilight Blade strikes, decreasing their reaction speed by 15%. Additional Active Skill 1 Twilight's Shadow, transforms the Twilight Blade into 8 copies, each carrying 80% of the original's strength. Duration, 5 minutes cool down, 3 hours additional Active Skill 2 Twilight of the Gods, transform a radius of 100 yards into a Twilight Domain. While within the Twilight Domain, User's basic attributes decrease by 25% and is split into 8 physical doppelgangers. If the doppelgangers wield the blade's twilight shadow summons, they will have 85% of the user's basic attributes. Duration, 3 minutes. Cool down, 6 hours. The famed smith, Flock Bear created this sword as a prototype for Afterglow. It is a masterpiece that was formed by combining all of Flock Bear's forging techniques. In Shifeng's opinion, 
If not for Afterglow's existence, the Twilight Blade would have been one of God's domain's 36 famed swords. It could almost rival the Sacred Sword, Killing Ray. If he only compared the weapon's attack power and strength, it was even more powerful than Killing Ray. Killing Ray had been crafted with a fragment from one of God's domain's 10 great legendary weapons, yet the Twilight Blade could rival its power. Although the Elemental Protector allowed players to summon elemental beasts, boosting their combat power, the Twilight Blade was a top-tier epic weapon with amazing additional skills. If one combined the Twilight Blade's two active skills, their combat power would skyrocket for a short time. God's Domain's experts would go crazy for either of these items. Let's go with you. After giving the matter some thought, Shi Feng chose the Twilight Blade. The Elemental Protector might be the better choice from a guild's perspective, but it would only be useful if the guild had a Tier 4 player. Tier 4 was still a long time away for Shi Feng and Zero Wing. Moreover, he had the Bible of Darkness, which was even more powerful than the Elemental Protector. On the other hand, the Twilight Blade could increase his combat power now. His Abyssal Blade's level was too low at the moment, its evolution speed couldn't keep up with his leveling speed. If he wanted to explore more of the ancient god's maze and acquire its treasures, he had to prioritize his own combat power. Following which, Shi Feng replaced the Abyssal Blade with the Twilight Blade. Although most players would struggle to fulfill the 2,000 strength equipment requirement, it wasn't a problem for Shi Feng. Once he equipped the Twilight Blade, Shi Feng felt his overall strength increase substantially. His attack power, in particular, rose by a whopping 15%. Shi Feng then shifted his focus to the crystalline pillar in the center of the hall. After all, it was the most valuable item in the area. Chapter 2061, Advanced Bloodline A magic array surrounded the crystal pillar in the center of the hall preventing players from approaching. Although the seal seemed quite simple, not even a tier 4 being could force their way through it. When Shi Feng stepped up to the barrier and lightly tapped it, a system window opened before him, introducing the magic array. Truly amazing. If I hadn't already grasped the technique to decipher advanced magic arrays, I wouldn't have been able to do anything but stare at this barrier. Shi Feng couldn't help his surprise after gaining a general understanding of the array. There were two types of magic arrays that protected system-generated treasure in God's domain. The first type disappeared once the guardian boss protecting the treasure died. The second type required players to unravel the magic array through their own abilities. This type didn't care for players' combat power but their ability to understand magic rays. The first type was the easiest to remove, but as players leveled up, they'd begin to encounter more of the second type. Hence, it had been very important for players to take on the magician subclass and develop it during Shi Feng's previous life. Many expert players had to study magic rays seriously even though they hated learning about them especially magical class players. Due to how common the second type of magic arrays had become at later levels, God's Domain's various guilds had also turned more focus to the magician subclass. During the game's later stages, a master magician's status wasn't any lower than that of a master forger or master alchemist. Meanwhile, to remove the magic array protecting the crystal pillar before Shi Feng, one had to be a master at deciphering advanced magic arrays at the very least. Normally, players only encountered basic ranked ceiling magic arrays after level 70. It was very rare to find an intermediate magic array protecting items of this level, yet the array before him required an advanced magician to untangle. Although the various superpowers had tasked many of their players to learn about magic arrays, there were very few intermediate magicians at this stage of the game, much less advanced magicians. Once Shi Feng had inspected the array, he began to dismantle it. Dismantling a magic array wasn't particularly difficult, although that didn't mean it was easy, either. As long as a player knew how to draw the ceiling magic array in question, it could be undone. Looking at the array, Shi Feng was relieved that he had already become an advanced magician. Otherwise, he could only watch as a bloodline slipped through his fingers. Finally, after studying for five hours, Shi Feng finally learned how to draw the ceiling magic array. The barrier around the crystalline pillar began to shatter, and shortly after, 
it fell away entirely, revealing the pillar before Shi Feng. The crystal pillar was translucent, and the bloodline within it shone with a dazzling light due to the magic barrier around the pillar. Shi Feng hadn't felt anything particular from the bloodline, but now that he had removed the magic array, he could feel an intense pressure, the difference between his life rating and the bloodlines, pressed down on him. Although he only stared at the bloodline, he felt as if he were being suppressed. Is it an advanced bloodline? Shi Feng could not help his surprise as he felt the pressure. Bloodlines fell into three categories, basic, advanced, and peak. The dark iron bloodline he had obtained from the divine shrine was a basic bloodline. However, since the dark iron bloodline was extremely compatible with the swordsman class, it was considered a top-ranked basic bloodline. Yet despite that, he still felt an immense pressure from the bloodline within the crystal pillar. The only explanation was that his life rating was inferior to this bloodline. Hence, Shi Feng guessed that it was an advanced bloodline. Although he very much wished that it was a peak bloodline, peak bloodlines were as rare and valuable as legendary items. The chances of finding one in the ancient god's maze were abysmally low, even for Azura mode. On the other hand, the chances of finding an advanced bloodline were relatively high. Even so, Shi Feng was stunned. Any advanced bloodline could make reaching higher tiers far easier for players. With a little talent and effort, reaching tier 5 wouldn't be a problem. An advanced bloodline would even help players when challenging their tier 6 promotion, which was why God's Domain's various major powers had gone mad over bloodlines in the past. Without hesitation, Shi Feng strode up to the crystalline pillar and removed the crystal bottle. He then inspected the bottle's attribute panel, Elemental Bloodline. After obtaining this bloodline, a player will become one of the element's favored children, gaining increased compatibility with all spells, mainly improves intelligence and vitality, followed by agility, endurance, and strength. It really is an advanced bloodline. After inspecting the Elemental Bloodline, Shi Feng was ecstatic. Although the Elemental Bloodlines attribute panel did not indicate the Bloodlines rank, basic Bloodlines only focused on one attribute, while advanced Bloodlines increased two. Since the Elemental Bloodline concentrated on two attributes, it had to be an advanced Bloodline. Moreover, the ability it provided was incredibly powerful, increasing a player's compatibility with all spells. It was, at the very least, far more powerful than any of the advanced bloodlines Shi Feng had seen in the Divine Shrine. If a magical class player used this bloodline, their overall prowess would increase. This was certainly a top-tier advanced bloodline, even more valuable than top-tier fragmented legendary items. Shi Feng carefully stored the elemental bloodline before he continued to explore the ancient god's maze. The maze was excruciatingly complex, and each time he entered a new hall, he had to face another group of elemental monsters. Moreover, these monsters' levels were a notch above the first group he had faced, all level 75 or higher. However, after equipping the Twilight Blade, Shi Feng's combat power had risen significantly, and as a result, he was able to kill these stronger monsters faster than he had the first hall's elemental guards. Unfortunately, Shi Feng only dared to watch the guardian bosses in these halls from afar. The easiest guardian boss he encountered was a Grand Lord ranked archaic species, and some halls were even guarded by mythic monsters. Without the ability to rely on summoned creatures, he'd only find an early grave if he tried to face these guardian bosses. However, Shi Feng didn't let any of the elemental monsters off the hook. Even if he couldn't do anything about the guardian bosses, these monsters were walking epic armor kit fragments and elemental cores. Encountering an opportunity like this in the future wouldn't be easy. As such, Shi Feng grinded in the ancient god's maze for 12 full days, wiping out every elemental creature, that was not a guardian boss, he came across. After exploring the ancient god's maze for so long, Shi Feng eventually discovered a unique hall. This one was far better decorated than its neighbors. Rather than stone pillars, this hall's pillars were made of mana stone. However, due to the hall's poor lighting, Shi Feng could only see 60 yards around him. The moment Shi Feng set foot on the floor of magic crystal, 
he struggled to breathe, a deafening roar then assaulted his ears, and the entire hall trembled violently at the sound. The roar faded, and before Shi Feng could regain his composure, a bright light illuminated the area. In the hall that could fit hundreds of thousands of people, a 60-meter tall bronze dragon loomed before Shi Feng. The bronze dragon's incredible aura was so powerful that it warped space around it, and when bathed in this aura, Shi Feng couldn't even move an inch. Chapter 2062 Bronze Dragon King A Dragon? Shi Feng stared at the titanic figure before him in disbelief. Even though he stood several hundred yards away from the dragon, its aura felt as if he stood before a towering mountain. The pressure he felt from the dragon was absolutely stifling. Its aura was so powerful that he couldn't even move, he could only stand there quietly staring at the being powerful destruction death these words ran through shi feng's mind as the dragon's aura washed over him bronze dragon king dragon tier 5 level question mark hp question mark slash shi feng had no doubt that the slightest exhale from this bronze dragon could turn him to dust even a tier 5 existence would be powerless before this bronze dragon king a dragon's life rating was extremely high and once it reached adulthood, it would automatically advance to Tier 5. The weakest Tier 5 dragon was an apex existence among other Tier 5 beings, and even during the gods' era, the dragon race had been one of the most powerful. Even gods and demons were afraid of dragons. Meanwhile, among dragons, there were dragon kings. Dragon king's bloodline was beyond the reach of ordinary dragons. At Tier 5, they could even contend with Tier 6 gods. If a Tier 5 human NPC encountered a Tier 5 Dragon King, they'd have no hope of surviving. If they were wise, Tier 6 god-ranked players would take the long way around a Tier 5 Dragon King. Trying to fight such a being head-on would be the epitome of foolishness. Fortunately, this Bronze Dragon King was sealed within a magic array. Otherwise, Shi Feng wouldn't have even had time to run. With a wave of his claw, the Bronze Dragon King could send Shi Feng on a free trip back to White River City. This is the final test. After seeing the raging Bronze Dragon King behind the magic barrier, Shi Feng shifted his attention to his surroundings. The hall contained a second magic array, and within it sat a resplendent box. Most players might not think much of this box, but Shi Feng who was unusually familiar with God's domain, realized that this box had been made with Seven Luminaries Crystal. Seven Luminaries Crystal was incomparably valuable to both players and NPCs. It was one of the reasons that so many major corporations invested in God's domain. Nothing else in the hall grabbed Shi Feng's attention. Unlike the previous halls, this one only contained a guardian boss. There weren't any mobs for Shi Feng to kill. Although Shi Feng wanted to approach and inspect the Bronze Dragon King, his powerful aura prevented the swordsman from moving. After raging for another 10 seconds or so, the Bronze Dragon King eventually calmed down. The ferocity of its aura also began to lessen, and Shi Feng regained control of his body. But as soon as Shi Feng began to relax, the imprisoned dragon spoke. Little human, the fact that you have reached this place proves that you have some ability. According to the rules those despicable gods and demons had set, I will give you three options, the bronze dragon king said, watching Shi Feng. Your first option is to accept my trial. If you pass, you'll receive the treasure those gods and demons left behind. Taking the gods and demons oath is your second option. You can also acquire the treasure this way. Your third option involves signing a contract with me. Although you won't get the treasure, you will receive my blessing. My blessing will grant you strength beyond human limits. Make your decision. Although the bronze dragon king spoke in the dragon language, which Shi Feng knew nothing about, he was actually able to understand the Dragon King's intentions. There are choices. The situation surprised Shi Feng a little. He had never imagined that the final hall in the ancient god's maze would offer him choices. He had never heard of such a thing. According to his knowledge regarding the Secret Keys trial, players weren't given any choices. If players wanted any of the trial's treasures, they had to defeat the guardian bosses, yet he now had three options to consider. The first option was undoubtedly the standard procedure. If players were confident of their strength, 
the first option would be the best. The second option allowed players to obtain the treasure without risking themselves overmuch. Many players would likely choose this option without a second thought. This was the final hall in the ancient god's maze. After all, the treasure in this room would be extraordinary, but Shi Feng understood one thing. There were no free lunches in this world. Current players might know nothing about gods and demons' oaths, but he did. During his previous life, these oaths had earned the nickname Divine Contracts, and every one of them was a two-way deal. By signing a Divine Contract, players would have to abide by the conditions the gods and demons had set. If they failed to do so, they'd suffer a miserable fate. Many in the past had eagerly signed Divine Contracts and failed to meet the stipulated conditions. And in the end, they had suffered such severe penalties that they had been forced to delete their accounts. Hence, while the second option the Bronze Dragon King had stated sounded good, the risk was considerable. The third option wasn't much different than the second, although this contract would be between the player and the Bronze Dragon King. There was no real difference between signing the Bronze Dragon King's contract and signing one with gods and demons. Although the third option wouldn't award the final hall's treasure, a Dragon King's blessing was just as extraordinary. Any blessing held great significance to players, especially the Bronze Dragon Kings. Its effects were likely even stronger than that of a bloodline. Blessings were so valuable in God's domain because of how few were granted. Only incomparably powerful existences could bless others, and those that received a blessing would acquire great power. However, this power had its price. The blessings giver would have to segment a fraction of their strength, granting it to their target. In other words, the blessing giver would lose strength to empower others. Hence, even tier 6 gods were incredibly careful when offering a blessing. They never gave one on a whim. May I know what the oath's conditions are? Shi Feng asked after giving the matter some thought. This I cannot answer. You may only learn more about the oath after taking it. This is a condition those gods and demons set for me so long ago, the bronze dragon king explained indifferently. Human, I do not have much patience. You only have ten minutes to consider. Can't tell me, huh? Shi Feng realized what was happening after listening to the bronze dragon king's words. Since players could obtain the treasure by taking the oath. Its conditions were undoubtedly quite strict. However, whether or not a player could accept these conditions remained unknown. By denying players the oath's details, players couldn't determine the condition's severity. This also ensured some sense of fairness to the Bronze Dragon King's situation. If players knew the oath's conditions, they wouldn't bother with the dragon's blessing. Human, what is your choice? The Bronze Dragon King demanded in a deep tone after ten minutes had passed. After taking in a deep breath, Shi Feng replied, the first option. Whether it was the gods and demons oath or the Bronze Dragon King's contract, the risk was too great. On the off chance that he couldn't fulfill the conditions, he would have to delete his account and start all over again. He didn't dare take such a gamble. What? The first option? Shi Feng's decision stunned the Bronze Dragon King. Are you sure that is your choice? Chapter 2063, Suppressed Swordsmanship Confusion flashed in the Bronze Dragon King's eyes as he watched Shi Feng. He was so surprised by this swordsman's answer that he couldn't help but ask for confirmation. Yes, I choose to accept your trial, Dragon King, Shi Feng said, nodding. You really are a strained human. Ever since this maze was built. Thousands of adventurers have visited, but none have accepted my trial because they already knew what outcome awaited them. Do not think my trial is so easy to complete. The Bronze Dragon King growled. But since you have decided, according to the rules the gods and demons have set, if you can survive against me for three days, you will pass my trial. Let's begin. The Bronze Dragon King began to chant an incantation, and abruptly, he began to disintegrate into countless particles of light, passing through the magic barrier the gods and demons had set up. After passing through the barrier, these particles of light gathered to form a humanoid shape before Shi Feng. After a short moment, a soldierly, middle-aged man in a suit of bronze stood within the hall. Unlike ordinary people, golden, divine runes marked this man's face and body, as if they were a seal. Death and destruction filled his amber eyes 
which didn't contain a shred of humanity. Humanization? Shi Feng stared at the soldierly man in astonishment. Extremely few beings were capable of humanization in God's domain. Rather, only legendary monsters were capable of the feat. Not only was humanization a sign of peerless strength, but it was also proof of a monster's frightening intellect. To current players, a monster's intellect, at most, equated higher combat standards, making these monsters more difficult to defeat than normal monsters. However, as players progressed through the game, they would discover that monsters with high intellect were absolute nightmares. Humanized monsters had, in the past, turned many kingdoms and empires upside down. One kingdom had even perished during a humanized monster's attack. That monster had merely been a tier 4 mythic ranked creature, and by that time, many experts had already reached the same tier. However, even after the various superpowers had combined their strength, the humanized monster had annihilated their forces. Since no one was capable of stopping the monster's rampage, the kingdom had been obliterated in the end. The humanized monsters that had been defeated had only lost because they had been tier 3 beings. Even so, defeating these monsters had required a large group of tier 4 experts and a collection of powerful tools. This was when players had realized the horror of high intellect monsters in the past. The humanized monsters' superhuman-like combat standards had even surpassed that of domain realm experts. In fact, the two weren't even on the same level. Human, according to the gods and demons rules, I will not use my full power against you. Moreover, you have 300 chances to succeed. You simply need to survive against me for three days, the bronze dragon king said as he smiled at Shi Feng. If you don't have any more questions, let the slaughter begin. Shi Feng's expression darkened as an unprecedented chill wrapped around him. Almost instinctively. Shi Feng activated Void Shield, and his mind went on maximum alert. Although he had known that this trial wouldn't be easy, he hadn't expected it to be this difficult. Players that hadn't experienced this situation might assume that the conditions for the Bronze Dragon King's trial were quite simple. They only had to survive against a level 70, tier 3 monster for 3 days and they were given 300 lives to do so. Even an ordinary expert could clear this trial with easy, much less a peak expert. However, Shi Feng recognized this for what it was. This was a one-sided slaughter. By the same time as Shi Feng's void shield took effect, the Bronze Dragon King, which had been 30 yards away a moment ago, stood before him. Before Shi Feng realized it, a dragon scale great sword had already stabbed through the void shield. What amazing footwork! Shi Feng stared at the long sword in shock. He had focused all of his attention on the bronze dragon king, his five senses never deviating from his opponent, yet the dragon king had evaded his detection and arrived before him like a ghost. It was as if the dragon king had used an instantaneous movement skill, but Shi Feng knew that he hadn't relied on some low class skill or spell. Rather, the Dragon King had executed a footwork technique, which had no cooldown and could be used as the Dragon King desired, that exceeded common sense. Meanwhile, with that one attack, the Bronze Dragon King had instantly dealt over minus 400,000 damage to the Void Shield. In other words, this opponent could destroy Shi Feng's Void Shield in 7 hits. Seeing this, Shi Feng didn't dare to hold anything back. He immediately leaped backward and used Shadow Blade. Under Shi Feng's control, ten sword lights struck at the Bronze Dragon King, aimed to seal the Dragon King's movements and allow Shi Feng to increase the distance between them. Although the Bronze Dragon King was only a level 70 Great Lord, its basic attributes easily surpassed that of a Grand Lord of the same level. There was no doubt that this Dragon King's attributes were much higher than Shi Feng's. He had no chance in a head-on clash. Hence, he could only try to put as much distance between them as possible and buy as much time as he could. A good attack. Despite being immortal, you've actually reached such a standard. The Bronze Dragon King leisurely praised Shi Feng as he examined the swordsman's incoming attacks. Just before the Ten Sword Lights found their mark, the Dragon King swung his great sword, shattering the Sword Lights before they could come within 20 centimeters. The Bronze Dragon King's swing created a mesmerizing arc of light, which even captivated Shi Feng, but in the next second, 
The Dragon King stood next to Shi Feng, and he hadn't even seen his opponent move. Again, the Dragon Scale Greatsword had thrust into his void shield before Shi Feng had realized it. After taking the hit, Shi Feng instinctively executed Sword's Orbit, his reactions visibly slower than the Bronze Dragon King's. Shi Feng had hoped that Sword's Orbit would force the Dragon King to retreat, but he advanced instead his dragon scale greatsword vanishing suddenly. The Dragon King used the weapon to deflect Sword's orbit and strike the void shield again. So, this is a humanized monster? Shi Feng could not help his shock as his void shield was struck, again and again. He had always surpassed his enemies by suppressing them with his swordsmanship, but this bronze Dragon King swordsmanship did the same to him. The Bronze Dragon King's slashes were so fast that his eyes could not keep up. He didn't even have the luxury to breathe while trying to defend himself. He barely even sensed that the Dragon King was attacking him. One hit, two hits, three hits. After several strikes, the Void Shield finally shattered, and Shi Feng had to rely on his skills to avoid or block the Bronze Dragon King's attacks. To hell with it. At this point, Shi Feng recognized how close he was to failing this trial. He immediately executed Sword's Transmigration, the strongest combat technique in his arsenal. Chapter 2064, Realm That Surpasses Human Limits As Shi Feng executed Sword's Transmigration, five sword lights intercepted the Bronze Dragon King's silent attacks. Boom, boom, boom. Deafening metallic clangs echoed throughout the hall and the collision's resulting shockwave was so intense that it made Shi Feng shudder. Moreover, his arms had gone numb from the impact. It was so severe that he struggled to move them. The Bronze Dragon King had leisurely executed his attacks, and his basic attributes were only slightly higher than Shi Feng's, yet he generated enough power to overwhelm Sword's transmigration's strength tolerance. Shi Feng could barely understand what could cause such a result. Without waiting for Shi Feng to recover, the Bronze Dragon King's Dragon Scale Greatsword vanished once more. Unlike before, however, the Dragon King's attack was truly silent. Shi Feng couldn't sense the slightest hint of the Dragon King's attack trajectory before he felt a stinging pain in his chest. Before he realized it, the Bronze Dragon King had thrust his Greatsword in Shi Feng's chest his HP depleting rapidly without signs of stopping. He is already beyond human limits. Shi Feng looked up at the Dragon King in surprise as the humanized boss retrieved his weapon. Shi Feng's vision darkened as his HP fell to zero, and he fell to the ground, lifeless. Sword's transmigration was the strongest combat technique Shi Feng possessed. He was even confident of posing a threat to domain realm experts by relying on the technique. However, Against the Bronze Dragon King, Sword's transmigration had only kept him alive for one move. The Bronze Dragon King was an apex existence in God's domain. Both his attacks and movement techniques were simply amazing. The Dragon King could launch his attacks without alerting Shi Feng as if the boss's boy acted without commands from his mind. The Bronze Dragon King's reflexes were so fast that Shi Feng's mind couldn't even react. Although such a feat was normally impossible. The Bronze Dragon King had done it. He had completely surpassed human limits. Shi Feng finally realized why the various superpowers in the past had dispatched tons of Tier 4 experts to defeat Tier 3 humanized monsters that were a much lower level, and even they, the players had still suffered tremendously to secure victory. Five seconds after Shi Feng died, he appeared before the magic array that had sealed the Bronze Dragon King with full HP. It felt as if the skirmish had been a dream. However, when Shi Feng glanced at the Bronze Dragon King's humanoid form nearby, he understood that this was no dream. Alright, let's begin the second round. The Bronze Dragon King stated as he unsheathed his Dragon Scale Greatsword and resumed his attacks. Now that Shi Feng had experienced the Dragon King's power, he didn't dare clash with the boss head-on. If he wanted to avoid dying 300 times in three days, he needed to buy as much time for himself as possible. With this in mind, Shi Feng turned and fled. As if he had predicted this ploy, the Bronze Dragon King threw his greatsword at Shi Feng, forcing the swordsman to a halt to avoid the flying weapon. Taking advantage of the brief pause, the Dragon King appeared behind Shi Feng, and without alerting the player, 
another dragon scale great sword appeared in the boss's hands, swinging toward Shi Feng before he had time to register the movement. Fortunately, Shi Feng had expected something like this and had activated divine steps a moment earlier. He promptly switched places with one of his doppelgangers, which were invulnerable to attacks. The following events happened as Shi Feng had expected. Once the Bronze Dragon King realized that the doppelganger before him was immune to damage, he attacked the other Shi Feng copies. Although Shi Feng couldn't perceive the Dragon King's strikes, he knew that everyone revealed some weakness when attacking. Discovering the Bronze Dragon King's weakness was precisely his goal, following which, Shi Feng swapped positions with the same doppelganger. He then turned and slashed at the Guardian boss. As the Dragon King attacked another doppelganger, his side was exposed. Seeing this, Shi Feng was ecstatic, and the hand that held Killing Ray sped towards the opening. Dang! However, just before the Sacred Sword met its target, an imperceptible attack countered the weapon, stopping its advance. So fast, the counterattack made Shi Feng realize that even if he found an opening in the Bronze Dragon King's defenses, he couldn't take advantage of it. The Dragon King was far faster than Shi Feng and could easily defend himself once he detected the incoming strike. Relying on speed to defeat the Bronze Dragon King would be impossible. Before Shi Feng could follow up with another attack, the Bronze Dragon King shoved his great sword through Shi Feng's chest again, and the swordsman collapsed. Although Shi Feng suffered a second death, he didn't feel discouraged. Since he was no match for the Bronze Dragon King's speed, he'd have to contend with this opponent through his strength. After running away to buy time and evading the Dragon King's throne great sword, Shi Feng had realized that he couldn't shake off the boss. His only option was to face the Dragon King directly. On his third attempt, Shi Feng used Shadow Blade and merged the ten blades into pairs. He then sent the five pairs of blades flying at the Bronze Dragon King. The Dragon King found Shi Feng's attempt at retaliation amusing. In response, the Dragon King swung its great sword at the five attacks convergence point. The convergence point of each attack was the size of a strand of hair, but the Bronze Dragon King countered all five pairs with the tip of his great sword, nullifying one blade in each pair. This effectively transformed the five combination attacks into five ordinary attacks. The Dragon King's counter had also altered the remaining blade's trajectories. After nullifying Shi Feng's shadow blades, the Bronze Dragon King killed him again. However, Shi Feng refused to give up. Instead, he continued to try different methods of buying time and retaliated against the Dragon King. Ten times, thirty times, one hundred times, the Bronze Dragon King killed Shi Feng, again and again. Without knowing how much time had passed, Shi Feng immersed himself in the battle, focusing on nothing but fighting. Through these repeated battles, Shi Feng was able to verify his theories and challenge his ideas. As a result, he continued to extend his survival time. Initially, he had only survived against the Dragon King for a few seconds, but now, he could last more than 20 seconds. Despite the Bronze Dragon King's ability to perfectly and effortlessly neutralize his attacks, Shi Feng's fighting spirit burned brighter as he fought. He insisted on trying out more attack methods. Despite numerous failures, after dying over 200 times, both Shi Feng's mind and body were exhausted. His reactions were slowing, and even though he was immersed in a high mana environment, he was still slightly pale. Eventually, the Bronze Dragon King initiated the 300th match. Advancing, the Bronze Dragon King arrived before Shi Feng, launching six slashes that escaped the swordsman's notice. This time, however, Shi Feng took a half step back and swung Killing Ray and the Twilight Blade in cross slash. Not only did Shi Feng manage to dodge four of the Dragon King's attacks, but he also deflected the remaining two with his own swords. However, due to the extreme power of the Dragon King's attacks, Shi Feng hadn't altered the Great Sword's trajectory by much. As a result, one of the Dragon King's attacks grazed Shi Feng's shoulder dealing more than minus 100,000 damage. He blocked my attacks. Confusion flashed in the Bronze Dragon King's eyes as he stared at Shi Feng. Shouldn't he be exhausted by now? How did he block them? Did he get lucky? I don't care how lucky you may be. This is the end. After Shi Feng blocked the Bronze Dragon King's attacks, 
The boss assaulted his target more fervently. Nine extreme slashes. Chapter 2065, Domain Realm. Nine streaks of silver light cut at Shi Feng. Not only were the Dragon King's nine extreme slashes silent, but the sword lights also bloomed like flowers, creating a mesmerizing scene. When the silver flowers bloomed, the world around the Dragon King seemed to freeze. If Miracle Dragon, from Miracle, saw this, he'd be stunned. He had been trying to master the technique, but the Bronze Dragon King's execution was perfect. Not only did the Dragon King's nine sword lights avoid all forms of perception, but their trajectories eventually converged at a single point, as well. The Bronze Dragon King had just executed a fully offensive combat technique. When the sword lights met, space around them shattered. A pitch black spatial tear extended toward Shi Feng. But despite the fact that the attack was impossible to detect, Shi Feng responded, moving his feet forward and positioning Killing Ray in front of him. Then, he activated Parry, his actions simple and straightforward. From afar, it would seem as if Shi Feng moved very slowly, and a spectator would see his every action. However, these slow motions actually blocked the Bronze Dragon King's nine extreme slashes. Boom. When the Dragon Scale Great Sword collided with Killing Ray, a deafening boom echoed throughout the hall, and the resulting shockwave was so intense that it reached several hundred yards away. Due to the impact, Shi Feng stumbled over a dozen yards back. After the dust settled, it revealed a deep cut in the ground at the Dragon King's feet spreading 30 yards away from the boss. The power of the Bronze Dragon King's nine extreme slashes was even greater than some tier 3 skills. The Bronze Dragon King, who was responsible for this display of power, wore an astonished expression. A human actually saw through my attack? The Bronze Dragon King frowned at the horizontal cut before his feet. The angle of the cut wasn't a result of his nine extreme slashes. It was obvious that his attack had been deflected. If Shi Feng hadn't seen his attack trajectory, the human wouldn't have succeeded. He would have been sent flying. However, the Bronze Dragon King did not know that Shi Feng hadn't seen his attacks in the least. Rather than self-reflection, Shi Feng had forced his way through the bottleneck he had been stuck in and finally entered the domain realm. The outcome even surprised Shi Feng. After such a long life or death battle, he was exhausted. Even his vision was blurry. He couldn't sense the Bronze Dragon King's attacks normally, much less with blurry vision. Under such extreme conditions, Shi Feng had used every method he could think of to detect the Dragon King's attacks. Finally, Rather than trying to predict the boss's attacks by watching his arms and body, Shi Feng began to read the Dragon King's breathing and subtle movements. After repeated deaths and experiments, he finally managed to see the Bronze Dragon King's attack trajectory. So, this is the domain realm? Shi Feng could not help his growing excitement as he glanced at the trembling sacred sword in his hand. He had finally risen to the realm he had never been able to touch. Perhaps it was because of his widened horizons or his changed perception of the world, but he now felt as if the world around him was utterly new. He finally understood how amazing it was to wield a domain. It was no wonder why domain realm experts were considered monsters. Now, he could predict his opponent's intentions and movements by watching the subtle changes to their bodies. It was no wonder why domain realm experts easily toyed with weaker players. However, the distant bronze dragon king had no intention of stopping his assault as Shi Feng celebrated his successful evolution into the domain realm. The dragon king immediately advanced and swung his dragon scale great sword toward Shi Feng's neck. Previously, every time the dragon king had employed such lightning fast attacks, Shi Feng had fallen in the next moment. But the swordsman wasn't as blind as he had been, although barely. He read and predicted a fraction of the Bronze Dragon King's attacks and countered them. Dang, dang, dang. Metallic clangs echoed throughout the hall. The battle that had been one-sided for so long had evolved into a fierce back and forth. Although Shi Feng was still at a complete disadvantage, and his HP continued to fall, this fight was no longer a one-sided slaughter. Although Shi Feng had entered the domain realm, he still shocked by the Dragon King's strength. He could counter some of the boss's attacks now, yet the Dragon King didn't evade his counterattacks, receiving them head-on. As a result, 
the massive gap between them hadn't shortened in the slightest despite Shi Feng's newfound ability to predict some of the Dragon King's attacks. Following which, Shi Feng activated one skill after another. He had even activated Life Domain. In the end, however, he couldn't change the outcome as the Bronze Dragon King continued to shave away his HP. It was only a matter of time before he died, yet as luck would have it, this was his 300th attempt if he died again, he would fail this trial. Seeing how little HP he had remaining, Shi Feng couldn't help but sigh. He decided to use all of his cards and see how far he could go. Not even a full day had passed since he had begun this trial. With the small fraction of HP he clung to, he wouldn't even survive five more minutes, much less two more days. Since he was going to die anyway, he might as well use this Bronze Dragon King to test his new strength. Shi Feng used the Twilight Blade's two active skills, Twilight's Shadow and Twilight of the Gods. The Twilight Domain dominated everything within 100 yards of Shi Feng. Suddenly, he split into eight copies of himself, each with 75% of the main body's basic attributes. Each copy then claimed a Twilight Blade and their basic attributes soared to 85% of the original form. Although Shi Feng had sacrificed some of his basic attributes to activate Twilight of the Gods, he had turned the one-on-one -on -one fight into an eight-on-one battle. As the Bronze Dragon King charged toward him again, Shi Feng activated the Ring of Gospel's Ring of Brilliance as well. Unfortunately, Shi Feng didn't have enough magic crystals on him to activate Miniature World. But due to Ring of Brilliance, his doppelgangers now had 100% of his basic attributes. Their physiques were even stronger than his main body's meaningless tricks. The Bronze Dragon King sneered at Shi Feng. In response, he summoned a second dragon scale greatsword, dual wielding the two massive weapons. The intensity of his aura also skyrocketed. He still reserved some of his strength. Shi Feng tensed as he felt the Bronze Dragon King's aura grow. It's over, human. The Bronze Dragon King growled, transforming into a streak of light as he moved toward Shi Feng. His movement speed was significantly higher than it had been, which made his movements more difficult to read. Divine Flash Not one to fall behind, Shi Feng surrounded the Dragon King with all eight of his clones and executed swords transmigration simultaneously. However, as he exchanged blows with the Bronze Dragon King, Shi Feng's vision abruptly darkened, and he fell forward. The Dragon King stood before Shi Feng proudly, his expression as indifferent and arrogant as it had always been. The Dragon King had known that this trial was impossible for any mortal since the very beginning. However, just as the Bronze Dragon King was about to return to the magic barrier, he halted, frozen in place. Looking down, he discovered a faint, white mark on his arm. He had actually lost one horsepower. He injured me? Shock brightened the Bronze Dragon King's eyes as he stared at the mark on his arm. Chapter 2066, Legendary Item Shi Feng expected the system to teleport him out of the Ancient God's Maze after his battle with the Bronze Dragon King, but when he reopened his eyes, he wasn't in the outside world. Instead, he found himself inside an elegant hall. A red carpet crossed the hall, leading to a golden throne at one end. A beautiful galaxy of stars decorated the ceiling, allowing the hall's occupants to view the universe. Spear-wielding knights in golden armor stood alongside the red carpet. Not only were they all level 200, but the weakest knight among them was also tier 4. The knight captain in the lead was even a tier 5 being. Moreover, none of the knights were human but bona fide angels. Any one of these tier 4 knights could rival a tier 5 human NPC in terms of combat power. The knight captain could even rival a tier 5 dragon. If these angels wished it, they could obliterate an entire empire. Before Shi Feng could process what was happening, the sound of a system notification reached his ears. System, congratulations. You have triggered the hidden event, Hero's Heart, and have been summoned by the Archange. Vitra, Archangel Vitra, the system notification surprised Shi Feng. The angel race's life rating was only slightly weaker than that of the dragon race, and among angels, 
archangels were akin to dragon kings. They could even contend with tier 6 gods. Every archangel had a mission and was more than capable of influencing the entire continent of God's domain. In the past, a tier 6 berserker god named Double Brilliance had been an unknown, ordinary player during the game's early stages, but after a fortuitous encounter with an archangel, he had activated an ancient world and shook the very foundation of God's domain, altering the status quo. Double Brilliance had even been responsible for some superpowers fall. Like a raging cyclone, he had grown stronger at a tremendous rate and eventually became a tier 6 berserker god. God's domain's players had regarded Double Brilliance's achievement as one of the game's legends. Many players dreamed of their own archangel encounter. Unfortunately, Players had only encountered such beings twice in Shi Feng's previous life. He had certainly never expected to meet an archangel here. Before Shi Feng could snap out of his daze, a handsome man with pure white robes and four equally white wings appeared before him. Shi Feng had failed to sense this angel's movement, but more surprising, he felt nothing from this being. Although the angel stood before him, it didn't feel as if the angel truly existed. He was nothing like the bronze dragon king, who had radiated an intensely stifling pressure. If not for the magic array that had sealed the dragon king, he would have likely killed Shi Feng with his aura alone. I have watched your battle with the bronze dragon king, and I have to say, it was very interesting. Not even the bronze dragon king had imagined that a human like you could injure him, the male angel said laughing heartily as he watched Shi Feng. He then continued in a softer tone, During your battle, I was able to sense your bravery and tenacity. Hence, I have invited you here in the hope that you can help me with something. Are you willing to assist me? System, do you wish to accept Archangel Vitra's request? Lord Vitra, it would be my honor, Shi Feng respectfully replied. Only a fool would refuse a request an archangel's request. The quests archangels issued weren't like normal quests. If one failed an archangel's quest, they wouldn't suffer a penalty, and the quest's rewards would be beyond imagination. Take Double Brilliance's reward, for example. According to the rumors, Double Brilliance had received his patron archangel's blessing after completing his quest. Not only had his individual strength skyrocketed, but he had also secured an advantage from the ancient world he had activated, allowing him to perform one impossible feat after another. Wonderful! Currently, God's Domain's world barrier is clashing with the undead world's world barrier. This, in turn, has created holes in God's Domain's barrier. Taking advantage of this situation, some of the undead world's inhabitants have snuck into God's domain and begun to cause havoc. Although we angels wish to stop them, we cannot interfere with the continent's matters due to the rules the various gods have set for us. Hence, we need a representative to handle these matters, Vitra said. I wish to appoint you as my representative in removing the undead from the continent of God's domain. System, you have accepted the hidden quest Undead World. Quest Content you must annihilate the undead hiding and causing chaos on the God's Domain Continent. Rewards unknown. Of course, you cannot complete the task with your current strength. Hence, I have prepared two items for you. The first is the Dragon Summoning Flute I've carefully handcrafted. The second item is this stone. These two items will help you deal with the undead that have snuck into God's Domain. After saying so, Vitra revealed a shining horn and simple black stone. Handing them to Shi Feng. Dragon Summoning Flute, Replica, Legendary Rank Item. A horn rumored to summon a flock of dragons. Spend 3000 advanced magic cores to summon 5 dragons to assist in battle for 3 hours. Cool down, 15 days. The dragons summoned can only fight NPCs. They cannot fight players or monsters. A Legendary Item. Shi Feng was stunned into silence as he examined the dragon summoning flute. He had to admit that a legendary item was awe-inspiring. The dragon summoning flute could actually summon five dragons. If only he could use it during his own battles, it would be a truly incredible item. However, the cost to use the flute was painfully high. Advanced magic cores could only be obtained from high-ranked bosses. Moreover, Advanced magic cores had a large variety of uses. Not only could they be used as a component when crafting master potions, epic weapons, 
and epic equipment, but they were also necessary for building many types of constructions. At this stage of the game, even first-rate guilds would be fortunate if they had 2,000 advanced magic cores, yet the dragon summoning flute required 3,000 for each use. No ordinary guild could afford such an expenditure. After inspecting the dragon summoning flute, Shi Feng shifted his attention to the black stone in his other hand. Mysterious stone, consumable. From the outside, it looks just like a simple stone. However, this stone contains a strand of a god's power. It has a chance of granting players self-awakening. This stone may be used up to 33 times. Self-awakening? Is this stone that amazing? Shi Feng was still speechless after reading the Black Stone's introduction. Self-awakening might be a foreign concept to current players. But Shi Feng was quite familiar with the idea. Self awakening could allow players to master a combat technique forcibly. Of course, learning a combat technique so brutally had a downside. Players would consume far more stamina when using the technique they learned through self awakening. However, this method also had its benefits. Self awakening would allow players to experience what it felt like to use the full technique and master it, which would, in turn, Lower the technique's stamina consumption. This process was far more effective than watching a video or experiencing the technique in a different way. As Shi Feng began to research the black stone, Archangel Vitra waved a hand. Suddenly, Shi Feng felt the system transport him out of the hall as he returned to the space time tunnel. Chapter 2067 New White River City, Star Moon Kingdom, White River City. When Shi Feng returned to White River City, he discovered that the city had undergone massive changes while he had been gone. He had only been away for two weeks or so, yet experts from well-known adventurer teams now crowded the streets. Even the weakest among these experts was level 63, tier 2, and they all wore level 60 secret silver equipment. It almost seemed as if such equipment had become widely available, something so common that it wasn't worth players' attention. Bronze mounts were also a common sight in the city now. Occasionally, Shi Feng even noticed players atop mysterious iron mounts. White River City had become almost as prosperous as an empire's imperial capital. Shi Feng had very nearly failed to recognize the city due to these massive changes. Moreover, Star Moon Kingdom's guards used to protect the city, but now, Guards from other nations patrolled its streets. Shi Feng even spotted players from multiple foreign first-rate guilds as he walked through the city, including a few peak experts from these guilds. Shi Feng wasn't the only player to notice these experts. Players who visited White River City for the first time were just as shocked. Amazing. Isn't that player wearing the Dawnlight set for Berserkers? Look at that elementalist. He's wearing the level 60 fine gold ranked wind spirit set. I've heard that the set only drops from level 60, 100 man hell mode team dungeons. So, this is White River City? Isn't the equipment these players are wearing here a little too amazing? I have only seen a handful of people with level 60 fine gold set equipment in the Black Dragon Empire's Black Dragon City. How are there so many people with that kind of equipment here? The players visiting White River City for the first time couldn't help but ask when they saw the well-equipped experts wandering the city. But the original residents merely spared these experts an indifferent glance. White River City had been developing too quickly, practically every day, and this was no longer an unusual sight. The city's rapid changes were all due to the Auction Arena system's activation. As the only NPC city in Star Moon Kingdom and the neighboring kingdoms to have the Auction Arena system, White River City had instantly become the heart of these kingdoms. The various major powers swarmed to the city in an attempt to compete for control of it. Hence, the quantity and quality of the experts here had skyrocketed. The auction arena system also provided a development opportunity for merchant and independent players, who had came running to the city, as well. As a result, White River City had grown into a large-scale NPC city with a player population exceeding 20 million. It also had more powers than any other NPC city in Star Moon Kingdom and its several neighbors. As for weapons and equipment, even the level 60 secret silver rank, which was rare in other cities, was almost a standard in White River City. Many experts even wore level 60 fine gold equipment. At this point, 
only level 60 dark gold equipment could draw attention in White River City. Unlike White River City's newest players, the city's original residents paid no attention to the wandering experts and their equipment as they rested and chatted by the roadside. Instead, they were focused on their discussions over the fight for White River City. The official struggle for White River City is going to start in two days. Independent players like us will get to enjoy a good show. I've heard that there are already four superpowers fighting for supremacy. I wonder how Zero Wing will hold its position? If Zero Wing loses White River City, all of its investments in the city will go to waste. Why are we even talking about this? Zero Wing can't hold the city. One of those superpowers will take it in the end. The auction arena's competition isn't like field combat players can't rely on tools in the auction arena. Participants will have to rely on powerful experts and resources to win it. Zero Wing is much weaker than a superpower in this regard especially when it comes to the number of peak experts it has. Zero Wing has no chance against the participating superpowers. I guess you're right if Zero Wing had another six months, it might have enough resources and experts to contend with superpowers. Unfortunately, White River City has been developing too fast. It was actually one of the first NPCs to get promoted. If it had been a part of the second or third batch to get an auction arena, Zero Wing wouldn't have had any issues securing its hold over the city. Nowadays, nothing grabbed players' attention than the fight for White River City in the Star Moon Kingdom. Not only would the upcoming fight determine who controlled the city, but it was also the first time these major powers seriously clashed. The auction arena also presented an opportunity for independent players to display their skills in front of these powers in hopes of reaching greater heights. While this sounded like a joke, it was the best way to become famous overnight. Now that God's Domain had more influence in the real world, more corporations invested in the game, and they all needed talented experts to work for them. If one could show off in the auction arena, one of the various superpowers might extend an olive branch, as expected of one of the first promoted NPC cities. Its development speed and competition truly are frightening. Shi Feng could not help his surprise as he noticed various guild players wandering the city streets. He had seen more than 30 second-rate guilds and as many as 10 first-rate guilds since his return to White River City. Not even Imperial Capitals had this many guilds. Yet this was only what he saw on the surface. Who knew how many more powers lurked in the city in secret? In the past, Shadow hadn't had any connection to the first wave of promoted NPC cities. At the time, Shadow had already been struggling for its survival in God's domain, and the guild had expended all of its available resources just to secure leveling spots and raid dungeons for its members' equipment. How could it have had the strength to compete for a major NPC city? Shi Feng had only heard stories of how powerful the various entities participating in the auction arena's competition were and the competition's intensity. He hadn't actually gotten a realistic sense of how extraordinary the competitions had actually been. Now that he was a participant, he couldn't help his rueful sigh. Shi Feng returned to Zero Wing's residence to organize the materials he had obtained during his trial. However, as he entered the guild hall, Shi Feng noticed that the hall's atmosphere was odd. He could sense a depressing energy throughout the building, and the number of experts in the hall had visibly decreased. Yulin, did something happen? What's with the strange atmosphere? Shi Feng asked Yulin, who currently sorted through the guild members' information. Guild leader, you're back. Yulin's face lit with joy when she saw Shi Feng, but then she frowned and said, Well you've been gone. Twilight Echo's survival in the Storm Empire has become unsure. Aqua Rose doesn't want to see the destruction of her family's guild and doesn't want to implicate Zero Wing, so she has temporarily resigned as Vice Guild Leader to help Twilight Echo under her own name. Many of the players that were originally from Twilight Echo have gone with her. I tried to contact you about this, but I couldn't get through to you. Twilight Echo is having an existential crisis? Shi Feng was surprised to hear the news. What happened? According to what we know, it seems that Nature Hall is trying to monopolize the Storm Empire and wants every guild in the area to submit as a subordinate. Since Twilight Echo refuses to submit, it tried to move out of the Empire, 
but Nature Hall refuses to let the Guild get out safely and has threatened to remove Twilight Guild from God's domain. Thus, the Guild is in danger of perishing, Yulin explained. I see. Once he had a general understanding of the situation, Shi Feng revealed a bitter smile and wondered aloud, Is Zero Wing really that unreliable? Twilight Echo was everything to Aqua Rose's family. Although she had broken away from her family's influence to develop independently, if Twilight Echo perished, so would Aqua Rose's family. Naturally, she couldn't just sit by and watch. However, Nature Hall was not the first rate guild it had been in the past. It had secured major corporations' investments and not long ago, had successfully removed a super first rate guild from the Storm Empire. Since it had a long time to develop after that incident, it was easy to imagine how powerful Nature Hall had become. Considering Zero Wing's current problems, if Aqua Rose used her identity as one of Zero Wing's vice skilled leaders to help Twilight Echo, Nature Hall would turn its eye on Zero Wing, increasing its number of enemies. Guild leader, should we send some people to help her? Yulin asked. Of course, we should. Not only are we going to send some of our people, but I also want you to send someone to inform Nature Hall that Twilight Echo is under Zero Wing's protection. Chapter 2068, Zero Wing's Protection, Storm Empire, Nethermine. The Storm Empire was located in a mountainous region, and various ore veins were common around the Empire. As a result, the Empire had become famous as an ore producer on the God's Domain continent. Meanwhile, the Empire possessed the Nether Mine on one of its borders, which bathed in Nether energy all year round. Because Nether energy increased players' stamina consumption several fold, and the mountains around the mine were home to level 70 and above demonic beasts players were rarely interested in grinding and leveling in the area. However, several thousand players had gathered near one of the creeks between the two mountains. The lowest leveled of these players was level 62, and all of them would be considered experts. Only, these several thousand experts were members of two groups, one with fewer than 400 players, and the other with nearly 3,000. If the Storm Empire's players were present, they'd be shocked. The smaller group consisted of Twilight Echo's core members, the pillars that supported the guild. Roughly 30 of them were top-ranked experts in the Storm Empire, and to ordinary players, they were unreachable. The strongest of these experts had to be Dark Wave, Twilight Echo's current guild leader and a player that ranked among the top 10 within his class. Many powers operated in the Storm Empire and its player population was even more frightening. Ranking among the top 10 on one's class ranking list was an impressive feat Dark Wave could easily rank among the top 20 or 30 in any kingdom's overall combat power ranking. Such a group of experts shouldn't even fear an army of 10,000 elite players, but despite facing a legion of less than 3,000, Twilight Echo's core members wore grim expressions. Their eyes even held traces of fear. To think Nature Hall would send even you, Vice Guild Leader Owl, to greet us, your guild must think highly of us, Dark Wave commented to the robust, bear-like man carrying two epic ranked one-handed axes, fear flashing in his eyes. Owl Life had only been an ordinary expert, but after joining God's Domain, he had repeatedly challenged the game's experts growing stronger at a ridiculous rate. In the end, he had grown from an unknown player into one of the Storm Empire's famous experts. He then caught Nature Hall's attention, and the guild recruited him. After joining Nature Hall, all life's development speed skyrocketed, and he quickly became one of the guild's capable generals. When the super first-rate guild, Nine Star Family had operated in the Storm Empire, all life had fought and defeated an army of its peak experts. He had even single-handedly killed five peak experts while leading a 5,000-man team to capture one of the super first-rate guild's towns. That battle had shaken the empire and made Owl Life famous. Eventually, Owl Life had become one of Nature Hall's vice guild leaders. Although Dark Wave ranked among the top ten in his own class within the empire, all life ranked among the top 10 in the overall rankings. While the difference might not seem major, it was like the difference between a candle flame and a roaring bonfire. If Owl Life wanted to, 
he could kill every Twilight Echo expert present, guild leader Dark Wave. I assume you know Nature Hall's stance on this since I've made the trip here. You people from Twilight Echo should stop deluding yourselves, All Life said with a commanding tone, smiling at Dark Wave. Twilight Echo has already conceded every high resource location available. We have even moved to this remote map to grind. We already intend to give up on developing in the Storm Empire. What more do you people want? Dark Wave said as he tightened his grip on his saber his expression darkening in frustration. The guild leader sent me to knock some sense into you, All Life said, chuckling. Either submit or we will remove you from God's domain permanently. There is no third option. Don't think that we will let you continue to develop just because you've fled to this remote location. Dark Wave's frown deepened. Nobody could have expected the competition between the various powers would become so intense after the auction arena's activation. To strengthen its hold on the Storm Empire, Nature Hall had begun an all-out war against the Empire's powers eradicating any that opposed it. Guild leader, why don't we just fight them? That's right. If we have to go down, we'll take them with us. Twilight Echo's experts prepared themselves for a desperate battle in response to Nature Hall's determination to drive them into a corner. You want to suffer mutual destruction? Do you really think that you're capable of that? All Life could not help but laugh when he heard Twilight Echo's members. All Life's words incensed Twilight Echo's members further. Only Dark Wave remained silent he had nothing to offer in rebuttal. His silence wasn't due to a lack of courage, but because Owl Life spoke the truth. No one in the guild had a better idea than he of how powerful the players who ranked among the top 10 on the Empire's overall combat power rankings were. It was no exaggeration to consider these players humanoid monsters. We don't have any other choice. Once the battle begins, I'll try to pin down our life for as long as I can. Everyone else, split up and run. Dark Wave said. He then turned to Aqua Rose, who stood beside him, and said, Aqua. You've seen it for yourself now. Your return can't solve this matter. You need to try to escape this. Don't let Twilight Echo ruin your future. As Aqua Rose's fourth uncle, he was grateful that his niece had returned to help the family's guild. Unfortunately, she couldn't change anything. After seeing how Nature Hall treated Twilight Echo, he knew that if any other superpower interfered, Nature Hall would make his guild suffer for it. Dark Wave knew that Zero Wing. Aqua Rose's guild, had been developing quite well recently and was now better off than Twilight Echo. Helping Twilight Echo wasn't worth Aqua Rose losing her opportunity in Zero Wing. Aqua Rose bowed her head and gritted her teeth in frustration. She had never expected Nature Hall to be so intent on cornering Twilight Echo. If she hadn't returned most of her weapons and equipment to Zero Wing's guild warehouse before leaving, she might have been able to fight our life and allow more of Twilight Echo's members to escape. You want to flee? Are you even strong enough for that? Our life ridiculed, sneering at the serious expressions on Twilight Echo's members. However, just before a fight broke out, 1,000 players ran into the valley. An elegant girl in beautiful mage robes, looking like a fairy, led the force, and many of the players in the valley couldn't help but stare. Among the 1,000 new arrivals, the lowest leveled player was 63, while most were level 64. The weakest piece of equipment these players wore was level 60 secret silver rank. Many of these players even wore level 60 fine gold and dark gold equipment. Both Nature Hall and Twilight Echo's members watched these newcomers with envy. However, the most noticeable aspect of these players was their sharp auras. They clearly weren't ordinary experts. Who are you? Can't you see that Nature Hall is busy here? If you don't want any trouble, leave immediately. All life warned the approaching 1,000 man legion. Normally, he would have already commanded his subordinates to eliminate any intruders. But this 1,000 man legion clearly wasn't a normal force. Even his players would suffer if they attacked these new arrivals without care. Us? We're from Zero Wing, Violet Cloud said with a faint smile. Zero Wing? Isn't that a guild from Star Moon Kingdom? Our life faintly recalled such a guild, and from what he could remember, Zero Wing had been developing excellently recently. He then asked, 
Why have you come here? We have orders from our guild leader to inform Nature Hall that Twilight Echo is under Zero Wings protection, Violet Cloud calmly replied. Chapter 2069 Defeating Nature Hall in Two Moves Zero Wing wants to protect Twilight Echo? Nature Hall's members were stunned when they heard Violet Cloud's announcement Twilight Echo's members were just as dumbfounded. Nature Hall was akin to the Storm Empire's Emperor. It had already grown powerful enough to demand respect from super guilds, yet Zero Wing, which was barely on par with a first-rate guild, intended to oppose Nature Hall. The guild leader plans to interfere? When Aqua Rose saw the 1,000,000 man legion from Zero Wing, excitement and worry flashed in her eyes. She hadn't had a specific understanding of Nature Hall before her return to the Storm Empire, but it wasn't long before she realized that Nature Hall shouldn't be provoked. Nature Hall's foundations were beyond her imagination. The guild already had more than 100 peak experts and tens of thousands of expert members. With so many experts, Nature Hall's rule in the Storm Empire was unshakable. How arrogant. This is Nature Hall's territory. Do you think that a few words will protect Twilight Echo? All life roared in anger. Not even your ally, the Dragon Phoenix Pavilion, would dare to act so pompously before Nature Hall. Vice Guild Leader, what's the point of wasting words on them? Since these ignorant players dare to act so insolently before our guild, we should get rid of them here and now. That's right. Let's teach these country bumpkins the difference between a kingdom's overlord and an empire's. We'll show them how little they matter in the Storm Empire. Nature Hall's members voiced their outrage over Violet Cloud's declaration, even offering to teach Zero Wings members a lesson. We are only here to give you notice. Your reply is irrelevant, Violet Cloud calmly responded. If you don't have any more questions, We'll be escorting Twilight Echo's members away now. The valley fell silent when Violet Cloud finished speaking. Even Dark Wave, Twilight Echo's guild leader, could not help but gasp at the girl's comment. He could not understand just what gave Zero Wing the confidence to provoke the Storm Empire's emperor. This is bad. Anxiously, Dark Wave turned to look at Aqua Rose and said, Aqua, you need to stop them. If this gets out of hand, Zero Wing will be doomed. Aqua Rose nodded, but although she wanted to contact Violet Cloud, All Life didn't give her the chance to do so. Bastards. Everyone, heed my command and eliminate these low lifes. All Life snarled as he pointed at Violet Cloud. The chilling gaze he aimed at the young woman even caused the experts around him to shudder. A little over half of Nature Hall's forces split away from surrounding Twilight Echo's team and charged at Zero Wing's 1,000,000 man team, their battle cries echoing throughout the valley. Nature Hall's members moved like well-trained soldiers. Not only were they fast, but they were perfectly in sync with each other. Eighteen shield warriors and guardian knights moved to the forefront radiating a silver glow as divine runes covered their bodies. They all had more than 200,000 horsepower, and their auras resembled that of ancient war gods. So strong, Twilight Echo's members lost their composure when they saw this. Every member of Twilight Echo's team was an expert. They could easily gauge an opponent's strength based on their aura. The 18 mounts radiated an intensely dangerous feeling, and Twilight Echo's members knew that in a one-on-one, -on -one, these mounts would blow them away. Not even their guild leader, Dark Wave, could necessarily stop these mounts' assault, even with an active life-saving skill. So, this is Nature Hall's Silverlight Battle Array? Dark Wave could not help but gasp when he saw the mount's silver glow. The Silverlight Battle Array was well known in the Storm Empire. Nature Hall had relied on this battle array to defeat its first super first-rate guild when it had still been weaker than Nine Star Family. He had only ever witnessed the Silverlight Battle Array in videos before, and now that he got to see it in person, the increased strength, HP and speed were beyond his expectations. It was no wonder why Nature Hall didn't fear other superpowers. Nobody can stop our guild's silverlight battle array. Let's tear apart these Zero Wing players. The Nature Hall players that still surrounded Twilight Echo's members laughed as their companions activated the battle array. The silverlight battle array allowed 18 players to link together. Not only could they share the incoming damage, 
but their strength, HPs, movement speed, and attack speed increased by 30% as well. Most importantly, they could share their senses through the battle array. However, before the 18 mounts reached Zero Wings team and tore apart its defensive line, Violet Cloud, who stood among her players, waved her staff. Dimensional Fracture Space tore before Violet Cloud, rapidly extending toward Nature Hall's members. Although the spatial tear looked fine and weak, it felt like the roar of an ancient behemoth. The sky and the earth trembled at its might. Dodge it! All life shouted, panicking. Unfortunately, the spatial tear grew too quickly for his warning to be of any use. Crack! The sound of shattering glass shook the valley as the spatial tear reached Nature Hall's mounts, who failed to react in time. Like a hot knife through butter, the spatial tear cut through the 18 mounts, their bisected forms falling to the ground. Nature Hall's rear line healers had no time to cast a healing spell before their mounts lost the last of their HPs. Moreover, the spatial tear didn't stop with the 18 linked mounts, reaping the lives of players standing dozens of yards away. Do you still wish to fight us? Violet Cloud asked as she retracted her staff and gazed upon Nature Hall's members. With just one move, Violet Cloud had killed over 200 experts. Her indifferent tone suggested that she didn't consider the act significant and Nature Hall's survivors shuddered in fear. You merely have a powerful spell. Do you really think that none of us can take you down? Rage flared in Owl Life's eyes as he glared at Violet Cloud. While he didn't particularly mind the deaths of 200-plus skilled experts, he minded losing the 18 mounts that could utilize the Silverlight Battle Array. The guild had carefully nurtured all of those players, and every one of them was very close to reaching the refinement realm. With the Silverlight Battle Array, each of those players had the combat power to surpass ordinary refinement realm experts. Losing a level might not impact their progress over much, but the loss of their weapons and equipment definitely would. They would need a lot of time to recover the items. All Life's body transformed into a blur as he dashed toward Violet Cloud like a vicious scale. Crap! All Life is attacking. Dark waves darkened as he watched Owl Life make his move. Owl Life wasn't like the 18 mounts that had died. With his weapons, equipment, and combat standards, he ranked at the very top of the Storm Empire. His two one handed axes were even epic set weapons. He could easily repel a great lord of the same level, and the valley's narrow terrain gave him the perfect battlefield. If Owl Life reached Zero Wing's team, disaster would ensue. In less than 10 seconds, all life arrived before Zero Wings members. Although Zero Wings ranged experts bombarded him with attacks, he effortlessly dodged or blocked the incoming spells and arrows. None of the attacks managed to reach him. As they watched, Nature Hall's players felt their blood boil with excitement. Ha ha ha. The Vice Guild leader is finally making a move. Zero Wings members are dead for sure. However, as Nature Hall's members expected to see Owl Life throw Zero Wings members into the air, Violet Cloud moved again. Like her previous attack, she lightly waved Death's sigh and manifested multiple magic arrays around her. Are you kidding me? Both Nature Hall and Twilight Echo's members were stunned. Violet Cloud had called forth 200 magic arrays, a blade of darkness forming before each array. Go! Violet Cloud shouted, like raindrops. These 200 blades of darkness descended on Owl Life, all under Violet Cloud's control. They were not magical projectiles that could only move in a straight line. Burial Flower Even Owl Life frowned as he watched the 200 blades of darkness fly toward him like lively sprites. He immediately activated his epic axe's active skill, and a gigantic flower formed beneath his feet. Twelve flower petals circled Owl Life each carrying 100% of his strength. The petals acted like Mount's shields. Unless Violent Cloud's attacks had higher strength than he did, they wouldn't break through Burial Flower's defenses. Burial Flower formed a nearly invincible barrier around him, following which, all life charged toward Violet Cloud. However, but the hammering sounds the Blades of Darkness made as they collided with Burial Flower's petals changed all life's expression. Burial Flower's petals which contained 100% of his strength, 
couldn't withstand the blades of shadow. The petals barely deflected the attacks and altered their trajectory. Against 200 blades of darkness, all life's burial flower and epic axes seemed like paper tigers. Even though he fought with everything he had and fully displayed his Void Realm combat standards, he could only dodge or block a fraction of Violet Cloud's attack. In the blink of an eye, the blades of darkness slid through Owl Life's body, plundering the Berserker's HP. Owl Life, one of the Storm Empire's top 10 experts, had been defeated. Chapter 2070 Powerful Zero Wing He Died? Owl Life's been killed in one move? Nature Hall and Twilight Echo's members gaped in shock after witnessing Owl Life's death unable to believe their eyes. However, not only did the man's corpse lie before them, but his trademark weapons, the burial axes, rested next to his body. Aqua, your guild's experts are quite strong. Is that girl your guild's number one expert? Darkwave asked his niece, his eyes glued on Violet Cloud. He had known that Zero Wing had been developing impressively. But he hadn't thought it had become this strong. Violet Cloud's gaze remained indifferent even after killing Owl Life as if she had casually slain a common monster she had randomly come across. Someone actually treated Owl Life, one of Nature Hall's vi skilled leaders, like a common monster, killing him as if swatting a fly. If news of this spread, it would shake the very core of the Storm Empire. No, Violet doesn't rank number one in the guild but she should stand among the top five, only. Aqua Rose stopped herself, watching Violet Cloud in confusion. She was very familiar with Violet Cloud's standards, like her, the girl was a refinement realm expert. However, Violet had achieved more in the refinement realm than she had. Although, if it came down to a fight, and their levels and equipment were equal, she could fight Violet Cloud to a standstill with her Sea God's legacy. If the battle happened at sea, she'd win by a landslide. If Aqua Rose had to fight a peak expert like Owl Life, even with all of her epic equipment, she'd have a very hard time defeating him. As for killing Owl Life in one move, she simply wasn't capable of the feat. The equipment that the various large guilds peak experts improved as time passed, yet for some reason, Violet Cloud had killed Owl Life instantly. Moreover, she had accomplished the feat effortlessly. No matter how Aqua Rose considered the situation, she couldn't figure how Violet Cloud had done it. However, Aqua Rose didn't know that Shi Feng had given Violet Cloud the elemental bloodline after his return from the Ancient God's Maze, and due to the advanced bloodline, Violet Cloud's basic attributes had skyrocketed. With her massive basic attribute advantage, it was only natural that she had slain Owl Life like a common monster. She's only in the top five with that kind of strength? Darkwave stared at his niece in shock. He no longer dared to imagine how powerful Zero Wing truly was. Nature Hall likely had less than a handful of experts that could kill Owl Life instantly. Yet a non-superpower like Zero Wing had four more of these experts. Meanwhile, Nature Hall's members panicked after watching Owl Life die. Like frightened birds, they scattered and fled from the battlefield, none of them daring to fight any of Zero Wing's members. What a joke. Both Owl Life and the 18 Silverlight Battle Array mounts had been defeated in a single move each. They weren't fools. Now that they knew they were no match for Zero Wing, they wouldn't stay and fight. Doing so would be nothing more than suicide. Once Nature Hall's members fled, Violent Cloud turned her attention away and approached Aqua Rose. Big Sis Aqua, here are the items you stored in the guild warehouse, Violet Cloud told Aqua Rose, who wore a hesitant expression. After trading the equipment, she said, Ah, right guild leader asked me to tell you this, don't hold back. The guild has your back, guild leader. For a moment, Various emotions overwhelmed Aqua Rose. When Twilight Echo's members heard Violet Cloud's message for her comrade, they couldn't help their envy. A large guild like Zero Wing was actually willing to start an all-out war with a superpower to support one of its guild members. They had never even dared to imagine such a thing in the virtual gaming world. If they could join such a wonderful guild, what more could they possibly ask for? Once Aqua Rose regained her composure and re-equipped her weapons and equipment, her change stupefied Twilight Echo's members. She had already felt incredibly powerful, but after replacing her weapons and equipment, 
she felt like a butterfly breaking out of its cocoon. Not only did she look beautiful, but she also radiated an intensely powerful aura. Although they couldn't tell the quality of her items since she had hidden the glow effects, her aura was even stronger than Dark Wave and Dao Life's. So, this is the guild Aqua joined? Dark Wave's shock was even greater than when he had watched Owl Life die. The fact that Violet Cloud had killed Owl Life made it clear that Zero Wing had its own capable experts, but the equipment that had instantly elevated Aqua Rose's combat power, which could now rival Owl Life's, had an entirely different meaning. Let's leave this place and return to Windy City. Now that we've killed one of Nature Hall's vice guild leaders, Nature Hall won't let this matter rest, Aqua Rose said as she glanced at Owl Life's corpse. A vice guild leader was one of a guild's public faces. If they did not handle this incident's aftermath properly, Twilight Echo would have a difficult time leaving the Storm Empire. Rest assured, Big Sis Aqua. The guild leader has led a group to Storm City to discuss the situation with Nature Hall. I believe he will settle this matter very quickly, Violent Cloud said giggling. What? They went to meet Nature Hall? Dark Wave nearly jumped up in shock. Are they tired of living? Although Owl Life was only Nature Hall's eighth vice guild leader, one of the lowest ranked vice guild leaders in the guild, he was still a vice guild leader, yet as Violet Cloud had killed the man, Zero Wing had been heading to Nature Hall for negotiations. Zero Wing was clearly trying to provoke Nature Hall. Zero Wing would likely have trouble getting out of this unscathed, much less negotiate a better situation for Twilight Echo. Meanwhile, in the Storm Empire's Storm City, Shi Feng's party of six had arrived before Nature Hall's residence. As the Storm Empire's imperial capital, Storm City's player population even surpassed Black Dragon City's. Storm City had nearly 27 million resident players, and its businesses were particularly prosperous. The city's prosperity was due to the Storm Empire's ores. Plenty of ores and gemstones, which other kingdoms and empires severely lacked, were produced within the empire's borders every day. Because of this production, a large number of foreign players visited the empire to trade and purchase items. Moreover, due to the abundance of ores, the Storm Empire's forging industry was exceedingly well developed. Shops that specialized in selling and crafting weapons and equipment could be found all over the city, and plenty of players wore the advanced forger's insignia. Intermediate forgers were a dime a dozen, as well. Not even White River City could say the same. Moreover, as many as eight known master forgers also called the Storm Empire home. Among them, two were independent players. No other empire could dream of achieving the same at this stage of the game. Purely in terms of weapon and equipment production, Storm City far surpassed White River City. Please notify the guild leader Nature that Star Moon Kingdom's Zero Wing has come to discuss something with him. Shi Feng said as he approached the Nature Hall member stationed by the residence's entrance. All right, but I can't guarantee that our guild leader will meet with you, the player replied, disdainfully eyeing Shi Feng's party. Normally, a large number of guild representatives visited the residence to meet with Nature Hall's guild leader, including representatives from the Storm Empire's first-rate guilds. Even so, their guild leader usually ignored their requests. As for a guild from a kingdom, even the vice guild leaders would likely refuse the request. The Nature Hall member then left to report the matter to his superior. Meanwhile, a middle-aged man sat behind an office desk, flipping through the documents in his hand, in the guild leader's office within Nature Hall's residence. Several level 64 players stood beside this man all of which were experts with multiple pieces of epic equipment any ordinary expert would feel as if they stood in a cage of bloodthirsty beasts if they stood before this group. Suddenly, a player entered the room, and upon seeing the players beside the middle-aged man, he couldn't help but shudder. However, he suppressed the fear in his heart and announced, Guild Leader. There's a group of representatives from Zero Wing asking to meet with you. They're a guild from Star Moon Kingdom. A guild from Star Moon Kingdom? Nature Manifestation raised his head as he listened to the subordinates' report, curiosity flashing in his eyes. Can't you see that the guild leader is busy? It's just a guild from a small kingdom. Send them back to their countryside. A robust man shouted. However, 
As the subordinate began to turn and leave, the icy cold goddess sitting beside nature manifestation received a message. As she read the message, her expression darkened. Wait. The woman shouted, Kylin, what's wrong? The robust man, who carried a gigantic scale shield, asked. I've just received news that our life has been killed, the woman, Jade Kylin, softly replied. That brat got done in. Who did it? Was it Dark Wave? That shouldn't be possible. The robust man was astonished. However, after recalling Twilight Echo's experts, he doubted that any of them could kill Owl Life. Number. According to the reports, he was slain by an expert from Zero Wing. Jade Kylan said. Chapter 2071, Explanation, Zero Wing. Isn't that the guild trying to meet with the guild leader? The shield-carrying man frowned at Jade Kylan's reply. He then turned to the reporting ranger killing intent lacing his words. These people sure have guts. A vice guild leader was one of a guild's public faces. Guilds typically avoided killing each other's vice guild leaders or guild leaders unless they wanted to shed all pretense, much less one of Nature Hall's vice guild leaders. They dare visit us after killing our people. Zero Wing is too arrogant. A gloomy youth sitting on one of the sofas in the office turned to Nature Manifestation and said, Guild leader. Why don't you let my evil spirit legion take care of them? Tooth, your evil spirit legion is Nature Hall's blade. Using it to teach a guild from a small kingdom a lesson is making a mountain out of a molehill, Jade Kylan said. Moreover, Zero Wing must have realized the severity of its actions and came to make amends. Hearing Jade Kylan's reasoning, the other players in the room nodded in agreement. The evil spirit legion was Nature Hall's trump card and it was a large part of the reason for Nature Hall's victory over the Nine Star family. Zero Wing didn't even qualify to face this legion. As Jade Kylan had said, Zero Wing must have realized how detrimental killing one of Nature Hall's vice guild leaders was and was likely here to make amends for the mistake. How could a guild from a small kingdom afford to provoke a superpower like Nature Hall? After all, enough. Nature Manifestation commanded with a low shout. Silencing everyone in the room, he shifted his gaze toward the reporting level 63 ranger, saying, Have someone lead Zero Wing's representatives to the reception room. Understood. The level 63 ranger answered and bowed nervously. A short moment later, one of the Nature Hall members guarding the residence's entrance led Shi Feng's party to the Guild Hall's reception room, surprising many independent players and the Guild's members. Who are those people? The guild leader is actually willing to meet with them. Nowadays, Nature Hall's strength grew rapidly. Guilds often visited the residents in hopes of allying with Nature Hall, but not even first-rate guilds guild leaders usually made it inside. And yet, Shi Feng and his companions followed a guild member to a reception room. Why wouldn't they be surprised? Everyone immediately began to chat about the identity of Shi Feng's party. Some of the spies other major powers had planted within Nature Hall also launched investigations into Shi Feng's party. If Nature Manifestation were willing to speak with these individuals personally, this event was certainly worth looking into. Nature Manifestation Current sat on a sofa in Nature Hall's luxurious, top floor reception room. Jade Kylan, Evil Tooth, and a few of the guild's other upper echelons stood beside him, radiating dense killing intent as they watched Shi Feng's party enter the room. Based on their auras, it was clear that these players were experts with an immense amount of combat experience. In fact, these peak experts or as were no weaker than the Dragon Phoenix Pavilion's Martial Dragon, with a few of them being even stronger. Twenty Silver Armored Shield Warriors and Guardian Knights had also been stationed in the room. Not only were these Shield Warriors and Guardian Knights level 64, but they also wore level 60 secret silver set equipment. Like well-trained soldiers, they stood in lines along the sides of the room emitting a solemn aura. Although the various large guilds considered level 60 secret silver equipment top tier at this stage of the game, fully equipping 20 players wasn't exactly impossible. However, these 20 mounts wore level 60 secret silver set equipment. Even a first-rate guild would be fortunate to have two or three complete sets. Furthermore, players had crafted these mounts equipment, 
which meant that Nature Hall was fully capable of crafting more. Nature Hall's foundations were extraordinary. I've heard that Zero Wing has something to discuss with me. May I know what you wish to discuss? Nature Manifestation watched Shi Feng's party enter the room through narrowed eyes. In a deep tone, he continued, If this is about Vi skilled leader Rao life, you may return to your kingdom. I am not interested in listening to your reasoning. As soon as Nature Manifestation was done speaking, the intensity of the twenty silver armored mounts or is skyrocketed, rapidly decreasing the temperature in the room. Jade Kylan and Nature Hall's other upper echelons revealed sneers and pitying expressions. Nature Manifestation typically let them handle matters related to guilds from small kingdoms, considering the matters beneath him. However, he had insisted on meeting Zero Wing's representatives in person. They had been curious about his sudden change of heart. Now, they understood. A life's death had enraged Nature Manifestation so he wanted to speak with the culprits personally. It had been a long time since they had seen nature manifestation so angry. The last time he had been this furious, he had removed three guilds from God's domain permanently. Those guilds hadn't been small, but first and second rate guilds. Since this guild had dared to enrage nature manifestation, Zero Wing would suffer a tragic ending. Even if Zero Wing regretted killing our life and wished to make amends, it was too late to change its fate. Once he was angry, no one could stop nature manifestation. Not even Nine Star family had succeeded in this regard. Explanation? What explanation? Shi Feng simply shrugged in response to nature manifestation's chilling gaze. What? After all you have done, are you seriously trying to deny your crime? Jade Kylan said, sneering at Shi Feng's leisurely expression. Deny? Deny what? Shi Feng turned toward Jade Kylan, frowning slightly. Is there even a need to say it? You are responsible for killing our vice guild leader Rao life in the nether mine. Jade Kylan hissed, her expression becoming even colder. Oh, that's what you're talking about? Shi Feng asked as realization lit his features. Calmly, he continued, that's right, we did that. You. Shi Feng's relaxed reply stunned Jade Kylan. She had assumed that he'd try to deny the fact. She certainly hadn't expected him to admit it so boldly. It's good that you acknowledge it. What do you have to say for yourselves? Everyone in the room from Nature Hill, including the Twenty Mounts, Evil Tooth, and the others who stood beside Jade Kylan, radiated dense killing intent. Their expressions made it clear that they were prepared to slaughter these visitors if Shi Feng said the wrong thing. What's there to talk about? Could Violet fail to kill this vice guild leader, Ao Life? Shi Feng asked in a strange tone. The hall fell silent as every player from Nature Hall glared at Shi Feng as if they were about to devour him alive. Arrogance. They had never seen such arrogance. Shi Feng simply didn't know how to spell the word death. After a short moment, Shi Feng returned his gaze to nature manifestation, calmly stating, We are merely here to tell you one thing. Twilight Echo, which your guild has targeted is now under Zero Wing's protection. Chapter 2072, Repelling the Enemy with One Move For a time, Nature Hall's members in the room were stunned into silence. They had no idea of how to respond to Shi Feng's declaration. Not only had Zero Wing dared to kill one of their vice guild leaders, but the guild's representatives had also come to Nature Hall's residence as if the death was of little significance. This swordsman acted as if Zero Wing had killed an ant on the roadside, not a vice guild leader. They couldn't help but marvel at Zero Wing's bravery. Now, Zero Wing even announced its protection of Twilight Echo, Nature Hall's latest target. This wasn't bravery. Zero Wing simply had a few loose screws. Not even superpowers would display such arrogance before Nature Hall. Jade Kylan even wondered if Shi Feng knew anything about God's domain. Perhaps he had decided that, since his guild was doomed and would be removed from the game, he might as well provoke Nature Hall on its doorstep. Ha ha ha. Good. Very good. It's been too long since our guild has done anything outside of the Empire. To think a small kingdom's guild dares to act so pompously before us. Evil spirit revealed a grin as he stared coldly at Shi Feng, anger tainting his smile. After chasing Nine Star family out of the Storm Empire, 
the Empire hadn't had any powers that dared to provoke Nature Hall. To secure its control in the Empire and concentrate the Guild's resources, Nature Hall hadn't extended its influence past its borders. Hence, the outside world was unaware of Nature Hall's power. There was also the fact that Shi Feng and the others had a few screws loose. Evil Spirit assumed that Zero Wing's members had spent too long in their own kingdom and didn't see the difference between the Storm Empire and Star Moon Kingdom, thinking that they could walk through the Empire unhindered. Nature Manifestation's personal security team stared at Zero Wing's members as if they were dead men walking. He's infuriated boss spirit. That guy is definitely dead. I bet these people won't get to leave Storm City alive. This is going to be entertaining. That's right. Even if they kneel and beg for their lives, there's no saving them. They'll probably lose more than just one level. Boss spirit will use that item and they'll lose three levels with each death. If we send a tracking team after them as well, we can even send them back to level zero. Although attacking another player inside an NPC city was risky, players obtain more tools as they reached higher levels. As a result, killing other players inside NPC cities became increasingly easier. This was especially true for a superpower like Nature Hall. Even slaughtering players in an Imperial capital wouldn't be a problem for the guild. This was also why the various independent experts had been more hesitant to provoke God's Domain's powers. A single mistake could send them back to level zero. After all, although the Zero Wing members present were experts and more difficult to defeat than independent experts, they were nothing to Nature Hall. Even a party of peak experts would fall in Storm City if they provoked Nature Hall, much less Shi Feng's party. Nature Hall had acquired a domain treasure called Dead World from an ancient ruin. As long as a player supplied enough magic crystals, Dead World would create a domain that cut off communication with the outside world. Not even the city's NPC guards would receive a notification of the transgression if one attacked another player within the domain unless it was destroyed or released. Ordinary NPC guards wouldn't even notice the domain when standing next to it. Only the Tier 3 guard captains could see through the domain. However, how rare were Tier 3 NPC Guard Captains? There wasn't even one Tier 3 Guard Captain for 10 patrol squads in an Imperial capital like Storm City. Meanwhile, each patrol squad generally monitored 3 to 5 streets. If they activated the domain treasure in the proper location, the chances of encountering a Guard Captain were nearly zero. While Nature Manifestation's 20 personal bodyguards whispered to each other, the Guild leader, who had remained silent, raised his head and said, so be it originally, I had planned to send you off with a warning, but since you don't know how to repent for your actions or show proper respect, I'll remove you from God's domain permanently. Then, I'll send someone to visit Zero Wing. In response to his guild leader's declaration, Evil Spirit revealed a stone plate and sacrificed a large number of magic crystals to it. The color in the room then faded to a dull gray. What? You want to attack us? Shi Feng asked as he sent a glance at Evil Spirit, who wore pitch black leather armor. Are you afraid now? Evil Spirit asked as he shot Shi Feng a playful look. Unfortunately, it is too late for regret. He had thought that nature manifestation would wait until Shi Feng's group left the residence before sending him to take action. He hadn't expected his guild leader to order an attack now. It was clear how truly furious nature manifestation was. However, he didn't think the reaction was unreasonable. Zero Wing's representatives were insufferably foolish. Even the King of Hell would laugh at their lunacy and imprison them for a few extra millennia. Afraid? Shi Feng shook his head. You're not strong enough for me to fear. Crap. This is the first time I've met someone so stubborn. Everyone, attack. Kill him. Evil spirit commanded, his eyes twitching in anger. The twenty silver armored mounts surged toward Shi Feng and his companions. Seeing this, Jade Kylan could not help but watch with a pitying gaze. Zero Wings members might have made it out of Storm City alive, but now, not only had they lost that hope, but they would pay an even greater price. Although she did not know what gave Zero Wings members so much confidence, she was certain that they'd die in this room. Moreover, players who died in the dead world wouldn't lose a single level, but three, at their level, 
leveling up required a lot of time and effort, losing three levels would be a huge setback, nature manifestations 20 personal bodyguards were more than enough to eliminate Shi Feng's party, not to mention the guild's peak experts like herself. Not only were these bodyguards refinement realm experts, but they also wielded the silver light battle array. When they activated the battle array, they could even kill peak experts. This was why Nature Manifestation's security team only had 20 players. As Jade Kylan and the other peak experts expected their guild leader's bodyguards to annihilate Shi Feng's party, several sword lights flashed in the room. Shadow Blade. As if every sword light had a life of its own, they agilely maneuvered through the bodyguard's defenses striking the players directly, as if some colossal beast had slammed into them, a dozen or so bodyguards flew into the walls behind them, which cracked under the immense force. In the face of death, Blackwater, Starlink, and Miracle's armies failed to remove Zero Wing. What do you think a few refinement realm experts can accomplish? Shi Feng asked as he sheathed killing Ray and sat back on the sofa. He watched Nature Hall's upper echelons calmly as if nothing had happened. Chapter 2073, Suppressing Nature Hall Looking at the robust figures planted in the walls of the luxurious reception room, the unharmed members of Nature Manifestation's personal security team froze in shock. When they returned their gazes to Shi Feng, they wore tense expressions. What's going on? What did he do? The security team members had failed to react to the attack. They had only seen Shi Feng swing his sword, and in the next moment, their companions had disappeared from next them and become wall decorations. How is this possible? Evil Tooth was just as stunned to watch the bodyguards fly through the room. He was very familiar with these bodyguards' strength when they cooperated. They could even take down peak experts. The silver light battle array allowed them to share their senses, which greatly strengthened their defenses. However, despite the bodyguards' enhanced defenses, Shi Feng had maneuvered his skill past their defenses and dealt direct damage. His control with the skill was frighteningly accurate. Good. No wonder why you dared to show such arrogance. Everyone, use your magic scrolls. Don't fight him at close range. Evil Tooth commanded after snapping out of his daze. He then turned toward Jade Kylan and whispered, Kylan, I need your help in a moment. This person is far stronger than I expected. He admitted that even he could replicate Shi Feng's performance, but he was an assassin, and the assassin combat method allowed him to slay opponents that were far stronger than him. You're going to fight as well? Fine, leave it to me. Jade Kylan nodded. Jade Kylan immediately began to chant an incantation. In the meantime, the rest of the bodyguards followed Evil Tooth's command and retrieved Tier 2 magic scrolls from their bags. These magic scrolls were extremely rare, some containing control spells, some holding AO spells, and others possessing single target spells. They had originally prepared these magic scrolls to use against enemies when outnumbered. But against such a strong melee opponent like Shi Feng, they had no choice but to rely on attacking from afar with these magic scrolls. In the next moment, flaming thorns, spears of light, and chains of sand flew toward Shi Feng, launching a wide array of spells like a combined assault from a team of magical class players. With how cramped the reception room was, Dodging all of these spells wasn't realistic. Most of the spells were also impossible to block as they were AO attacks. Die! The bodyguards shouted. However, before the multiple spells bombarded Shi Feng, he lifted Killing Ray and slashed the empty space before him. Countless arcs of lightning appeared out of thin air, devouring everything in their path. Even the Tier 2 spells vanished the moment they touched the lightning. Lightning Edge Boom! A massive explosion shook the reception room, its lavish decorations becoming nothing more than remnants. The bodyguards that had attacked Shi Feng had vanished from the room. The weapons and equipment pieces on the floor were the only indicator of their prior presence. Over a dozen well-equipped mounts with over 180,000 horsepower had died. Just like that, in contrast, Shi Feng hadn't changed. He hadn't even moved from his original position, much less taken damage. Shi Feng had executed only two moves, 
yet he had killed more than half of Nature Manifestation's famous security team. The security team's remaining members were crippled. Shi Feng's combat power was horrific. How was he supposed to be a player? He was basically a monster that destroyed everything in his path. Just as everyone assumed the battle was over, Jade Kylan, who hadn't stopped chanting, finally finished her spells. She slammed the butt of her resplendent staff against the floor and commanded, Seal. Three magic arrays appeared around her, each from a different spell, yet they had appeared simultaneously and were of similar design as if they were a single spell. A threefold, large-scale spell? Alluring Summer, who stood behind Shi Feng was surprised to see the arrays circling Jade Kylan. Double casting was an extremely difficult technique for most magical class experts, especially when casting Tier 2 spells. Needless to say, triple casting three Tier 2 spells was even more difficult. However, there were certain spells in God's domain that could only be used when casting multiple spells. Generally, these were large-scale spells that required multiple players to cast, Yet Jade Kylan could cast one that typically needed three players by herself. These large-scale spells were far more powerful than individual spells of the same tier. The instant Jade Kylan's spells took effect, five golden chains appeared around she, each containing shuddering power. Not even Grand Lords of the same level would dare to touch these chains, as if they had a life of their own. These chains launched at Shi Feng like anacondas. Let's see how he blocks this. The Nature Hall members sneered at Shi Feng as they watched. Tier 2 Large Scale Spell, Holy Chains. This was Jade Kylan's ultimate spell. Although it had a very long cast time and wasn't suited for one on one combat, it would exhibit tremendous power once cast. Jade Kylan had killed multiple peak experts with this move earning the nickname Chain Killer from the Storm Empire's players. However, the expressions Nature Hall's members wore froze as they watched what happened next. Shi Feng blocked the Golden Chains, which even Grand Lords feared, with his swords, a thunderous roar echoing throughout the room when his blades collided with the magical attack. Despite the Five Chains' exceptional strength, they couldn't reach Shi Feng. He deflected every incoming attack. As Shi Feng defended himself against the magical chains, Evil Tooth appeared behind him in complete silence. After revealing himself, Evil Tooth thrust a glowing, crimson dagger toward Shi Feng's back. Dear to taboo skill, Blood Shadow. This single attack contained even more power than Jade Kylan's five chains combined. You've finally made your move. Rather than panicking in the face of this sudden and well-timed attack, Shi Feng revealed a smile. Swords transmigration. Suddenly, the twilight blade and killing ray transformed into two streaks of light and wrapped around the five holy chains, as if they were under his control. The five chains then flew to intercept Evil Tooth's crimson dagger, the collision throwing sparks that temporarily blinded everyone in the room. When the light faded, Nature Hall's members wore grim expressions. Evil Tooth's HP plummeted as he stared at Shi Feng in horror. Although he wanted to say something, he had already lost the last of his HP. With darkening vision, Evil Tooth collapsed to the floor. Silence dominated the reception room. Nature Manifestation's personal bodyguards had worked with two of the guild's peak experts against one opponent, yet they were either dead or crippled, aside from Jade Kylan. Like an unshakable mountain, Shi Feng still stood where he had stated. The death world shattered the moment Evil Tooth died, and the room returned to its original state. Chapter 2074 Another monster's silence. Shock. Horror. Even though Dead World had been removed and the reception room had returned to its neutral state, Jade Kylan and the other Nature Hall Peak experts felt stifled and overwhelmed. Even Nature Manifestation, who had observed the fight in silence, wore a gloomy expression. Who are you? Nature Manifestation asked Shi Feng. Ordinary Peak experts couldn't topple his personal bodyguards or evil tooth the evil spirit legion's commander. While he had considered the possibility of their defeat, he hadn't expected it to happen so easily. He couldn't imagine anyone, aside from domain realm monsters, who would be capable of such a feat. But how rare were domain realm experts in God's domain? Every domain realm expert that had ever existed in the virtual gaming world was accounted for, 
and they were all responsible for shaking the community to its core. However, based on his information, Shi Feng's name wasn't on that list. Black Flame, Shi Feng stated calmly. Black Flame, Zero Wings Guild leader? Shock colored Jade Kylan's face when she heard Shi Feng's reply. But how? Black Flame wasn't unknown to Nature Hall. After all, he ranked among the top 10 on the God's Domain expert list. He was a peak expert that had reached the Void Realm, and one of the top peak experts in the game. But at the end of the day, that's all he was, a peak expert although they earned the various superpowers' attention, they weren't powerful enough to threaten a superpower's very existence. Every superpower had plenty of peak experts in its ranks. No matter how she looked at it, however, no peak expert should be capable of the combat power Shi Feng had displayed. What an excellent scheme. So, you've deliberately hidden your strength all this time? Nature Manifestation asked. Unexpected, he was actually smiling. However, knowing their guild leader's personality, Jade Kylan and her companion's new Nature Manifestation smile wasn't an indication of his good mood. Rather, it was a result of his anger reaching a tipping point. The various superpowers in God's domain viewed every domain realm expert as immensely important. Rather, these experts were impossible to ignore. Domain realm experts were strategic weapons, and as players reached higher levels, the threat these experts posed to superpowers would grow. Hence, superpowers took considerable precautions against every domain realm expert they encountered. If Shi Feng had revealed himself as a domain realm expert early on, the various superpowers would have paid more attention to Zero Wing. The guild's name would have likely joined the superpowers blacklists, regardless of its developmental state. Some superpowers might have even extinguished Zero Wing immediately to save themselves from future trouble. As for Shi Feng recently reaching the Domain Realm, it wasn't likely. Reaching the Domain Realm proved that one transcended the limits of humanity. Despite the various super first-rate guilds and super guilds accumulating resources and knowledge over many generations, each superpower had, at most, nurtured only a handful of domain realm experts in each generation. It was easy to imagine how difficult reaching the domain realm truly was. In other words, Shi Feng must have hidden his strength from the public deliberately to avoid attracting too much attention. Now that he was satisfied with his personal strength and that of his guild, he wanted to use Nature Hall as a stepping stone to show off his power. That would explain why Wood Shi Feng was willing to make an enemy of Nature Hall just to help Twilight Echo, a guild he was barely connected to. Guild leader, should we request senior fans' presence? Jade Kylan whispered to her guild leader. Although domain realm experts were extremely rare, Nature Hall had its own collection of them. Senior Fan was one example. Moreover, he had spent most of his time in the Storm Empire. If they notified him, he would soon return to the residence. If Senior Fan returned, with the help of Nature Hall's other peak experts, they could ensure that Shi Feng's party didn't leave the residence with their lives. After all, this was Nature Hall's main headquarters. After Jade Kylan posed her question, the three imposing men beside her directed their killing intent toward Shi Feng. A mere up-and-coming guild like Zero Wing actually dared to use Nature Hall as a stepping stone. This was unacceptable. Suddenly, the reception room's doors flew open, and a group of 50-plus silver-armored experts charged in and surrounded Shi Feng's party. Although they weren't refinement realm experts like Nature Manifestation's personal bodyguards, they could rival such experts with their silver light battle array. What, you still insist on fighting? Shi Feng asked as he calmly watched Nature Hall's members from his seat, showing no signs of anxiety or concern. He wouldn't have dared to visit Nature Hall's residence before he had reached the Domain Realm and acquired the Twilight Blade. This was, after all, a superpower's headquarters, and Nature Hall would have plenty of methods to deal with invaders. The guild would also have other Domain Realm experts nearby. At this stage of the game, Shi Feng's fight against Marshall Dragon on Thunder Island wasn't a proper indicator of Domain Realm experts' prowess. During that battle, he had had the advantage in terms of basic attributes and skills, and since Martial Dragon had only been a tier 1 player, 
the man's weak physique had prevented him from fully exhibiting his strength. To put it simply, players' physiques at that time had restricted domain realm experts. Shi Feng hadn't gotten a clear idea of how strong domain realm experts were in that fight, but once he had reached the same realm, he understood these experts' true power. With a tier 1 player's physique, domain realm experts would be limited to 50% of their true combat power at most. However, Void Realm experts would be able to display their full combat power. It was only natural that Domain Realm experts back then had only seemed slightly more powerful than Peak experts. At this stage of the game, however, not only had Domain Realm experts' physiques greatly improved, but their weapon and equipment standards had also increased. A superpowers Domain Realm expert likely wore at least three or four pieces of epic equipment possibly even a fragmented legendary item. Superpowers had frightening resources and expansive territory. Encountering a superpower that owned one or two fragmented legendary items at this stage of the game wouldn't be odd. As soon as Shi Feng was done speaking, Fire Dance, Cola, Alluring Summer, Shadow Blade, and Yi Wu Mian, who stood behind him, stepped forward and released their auras. As if a volcano had erupted in the room. An intense energy washed over its occupants, and the expressions that Nature Hall's members wore changed instantly. Fire Dance and her comrades felt like primordial beasts that had just awoken from a long slumber. The pressure they radiated was painfully stifling, particularly Fire Dance's aura. Could she be another domain realm expert? The thought drifted through Jade Kylan and her companions' minds. Shuddering at the idea, Zero Wing was merely a small kingdom's guild. It wasn't even a superpower, yet it had two domain realm experts. Since when were domain realm experts so common? If Shi Feng could hear these peak experts' thoughts, he wouldn't have been surprised. Among the five players he had brought with him, only Fire Dance held a fragmented legendary weapon. She also had her own bloodline and six epic items. In Zero Wing, Fire Dance's equipment standards were only second to his. Moreover, she was only a step away from the Truth Realm and had already mastered multiple advanced combat techniques. In her current state, she could definitely contend with Domain Realm experts. Chapter 2075 Miscalculation Although Jade Kylan and Nature Hall's other peak experts had intended to act, they couldn't help but freeze the moment they felt Fire Dance's oppressive aura. Guild leader, are we still going to fight them? Jade Kylan could not help but ask as she turned to look at nature manifestation, her expression hesitant. One domain realm expert was already extremely difficult to defeat. Now that Fire Dance, who felt like another domain realm expert, had joined the fray, she had to take this situation more seriously. Ordinary players might not realize the importance of one or two domain realm experts in a guild. But as one of Nature Hall's upper echelons, she was very clear of the implications. This was no longer a matter of Shi Feng or Fire Dance's personal strength, but of Zero Wing's foundations. Instead, it was a matter of Zero Wing's guild foundations. If Zero Wing had only possessed a single domain realm expert, it could have been explained away as luck. It would prove nothing regarding Zero Wing's foundation. However, the fact that Zero Wing had at least two Domain Realm experts couldn't be shrugged off in the same way. Domain Realm experts weren't as common as cabbages. If Zero Wing truly had two Domain Realm experts, the guild wasn't as simple as everyone assumed. Kylan, you're overthinking this. Her aura doesn't prove that she's a Domain Realm monster. She could simply have absurdly high basic attributes. Zero Wing has no background. So it's lucky enough to have one domain realm expert. How could it possibly have to? And such a young one at that. A solemn man with a scar across his face spoke up. Listening to the man's reasoning, Nature Hall's members relaxed, releasing more than half of their anxiety. No one doubted this man's words. He was Deep Thunder, Nature Hall's first vice guild leader and one of the guild's main support pillars. He was also one of the top 10 experts on the God's Domain Secret Experts list. The Secret Pavilion had two God's Domain Experts lists. One recorded the top 1,000 experts with the most attention-grabbing battle records. The second was a secret list, 
which only superpowers could purchase. The secret experts list only contained 100 names. However, these players weren't ranked by their battle records, but based on the combat standards they had revealed. One had to be a Void Realm expert before the secret pavilion would even consider them for the list. Any peak expert that could rank on the secret experts list was, at most, a step away from the domain realm. Those that ranked among the top 10 were practically pounding against the edge of this realm. They only needed a slight push to reach the domain realm. Deep Thunder was one of these experts. Although none of Nature Hall's experts in the room had reached the domain realm yet, Deep Thunder was undoubtedly the most knowledgeable about it. Since Deep Thunder was certain that Fire Dance was not a domain realm expert, there was a 90% chance that he was correct. Thunder is right. Everyone needs to calm down. Although I don't know how this little girl from Zero Wing has such frightening basic attributes, Zero Wing is 100 years too early if it thinks it can stroll into Nature Hall's residence with such an attitude. Nature Manifestation commented, backing up Deep Thunder. He flashed Shi Feng a piercing glare before commanding. Summon Senior Fan and the Evil Spirit Legion members immediately. Lock down the residence. I want to see how capable these Zero Wing representatives truly are. Although Shi Feng had displayed astonishing combat power, Nature Hall wasn't a pushover. Nature Hall had gone to great lengths to recruit Senior Fan and convince him to protect the guild. The Elder had been a domain realm monster for decades, and his combat standards were far above Shi Feng's, who at most, had only entered the domain realm within the past few years. Senior Fan also wore the best equipment available in the game, and the Evil Spirit Legion was one of Nature Hall's trump cards. Although the Evil Spirit Legion only had 100 members, every member was a refinement realm expert or better. Even the weakest among them had mastered three combat techniques, and including the Silverlight Battle Array. They could even defeat domain realm experts. The Evil Spirit Legion was also why Nature Hall even dared to provoke super first rate guilds. However, the moment Nature Manifestation issued the order, Fire Dance's group moved, charging straight toward the guild leader. Taking the lead, Kola and Yi Wumian dashed forward like two Tyrannosaurus Rexes. When the reinforcing security team members collided with the two mounts, they flew backward as if they had been hit by a truck, their tight defensive formation shattering instantly. Alluring Summer and Shadow Sword followed the two mounts closely. Alluring Summer sent at least one player flying with each spell she cast, while Shadow Sword forced multiple players to stumble back with each slash. These two easily repelled any security team members that approached from the sides. Rather than a battle, this looked like adults toying with children. Taking advantage of the chaos, Fire Dance blew past the security team's blockade and arrived before Nature Manifestation. Don't think you can get through me that easily, Deep Thunder bellowed, swinging his gigantic, two-handed battle axe with a solemn expression, leaving no room for Fire Dance to dodge. Dear to skill, Earth Bombardment. Peng. Not only was Earth Bombardment an AO attack that amplified his strength, but it could also significantly reduce players' movement speed when he struck. This was the trademark tier skill of the Magic Warrior Hidden class. The move could only be blocked, not dodged. In addition, the Magic Warrior class was a specialized advanced class for Berserkers, using magic to strengthen the user's body. However, Deep Thunder's expression froze when his attack landed. Fire Dance's flimsy short sword had actually stopped his humongous axe's descent. Not only had Fire Dance remained stable, but she also retained every point of her HP. Before Deep Thunder could swing his battle axe again, Fire Dance's thousand transformations slithered toward the Berserker's neck with an utterly unpredictable attack trajectory. Advanced Combat Technique, Illusory Snake, Scram. Deep Thunder shouted as he activated Whirlwind Slash to defend himself. Boom. When Short Sword and Battle Axe collided, a sharp clang echoed throughout the room. A moment later, Deep Thunder, who prided himself on his strength, stumbled three steps back, staring at Fire Dance with an incredulous look. While he had recognized Fire Dance's amazing basic attributes, he hadn't expected them to be so high. How does she have so much strength? 
Deep Thunder wasn't the only one the situation surprised. Jade Kylan, who cast spells from the side, glanced over in horror when she noticed Deep Thunder stumble. In God's Domain, there was a major difference between one-handed weapon's strength and that of two-handed weapons. This was why most Berserker players chose two-handed weapons. Two-handed weapons could make full use of Berserker's high strength. However, despite being an assassin, Fire Dance exhibited greater strength with a short sword than Deep Thunder. This unraveled everything Jade Kylan thought she knew about God's domain. Moreover, Deep Thunder wore three pieces of epic equipment wielded an epic weapon, and the rest of his equipment was comprised of level 60 dark gold items. She couldn't imagine how an assassin could block one of his attacks with a one-handed sword. After sending Deep Thunder backward, Fire Dance abruptly vanished. Void Steps By the time anyone could react, Fire Dance had reappeared before nature manifestation, holding her thousand transformations against the guild leader's throat. As a cursement sir, Fire Dance held Nature Manifestation's life in her hands. Seeing this, Nature Hall's members paused with gloomy expressions. When Nature Manifestation looked up at Fire Dance, his countenance was ashen. Fire Dance's group had only moved five seconds ago, yet they had already gotten past more than 50 refinement realm and better experts, threatening his life. Not even a domain realm expert could perform such a feat.